Obviously enjoyed lockdown, did you? I did. Oh, good, good. I did. That's true.
o rātou whānau e tangi tonu nei, e mapu tonu nei, e poroporo aki tonu nei a rātou. A ti anō rā, ko koe rā tērā e te kai whakamāra māna i a mātou o mātou tirohanga ki mua. Tēnei rā e tō mātou matua nui te rangi, ki roto i nā tēnā whānau, ki roto i tēnā whānau, ki roto i tēnā murumuru, ki roto i tēnā murumuru. Ko ti anō rā a nei rā, ko te ahua nei, ko koe rā e pako nei tēnā murumuru, ki a hui hui kato tātou i runga i o tātou reo, i runga anu hoki o tātou tika. Nō rīra tēnei ngā, koe hui hui mai nei tēnei o mātou wiwi, o mātou kalangaranga hapū, marae, whānau, o roto o rongo whakāta, o roto o te tai rāwhiti, a nei rā mātou koe hui hui mai nei, i raro anu hoki te mahana, te mana akitanga o tamanui te rā. A ki runga ki a mātou, ki a pai ai a mātou hari ngātu, ki a pai ai mātou kōrero atu, kōrero mai, whakawhiti whakāro atu, whakawhiti whakāro mai. Tēnei anō rā mātou i noi tonu atu rā mātou, ki a pau katoa mātou i noi ki a koe tō mātou matua nui te rangi. Koe hiukaraiti hoki tō mātou, kai whaka ora. Āmen. Āmen. Ora tātou, te ora tātou i raro anō hoki ngā tohu tohu o tō tātou keia. I rongā anō hoki, anei rā, he tohu pai, ko puta mai rā tātou i tēnei rā. Anei rā te mahana tanga o tamanui te rā, Kia mahana ai te rai o tēnā o tēnā o tātau. Kia hai, kia whakakotahi ai tātau, i raro anu hoki te mana ki tanga o tamanu i tēnā. Nō reira a ki o kupakeki, te nā koutou, te nā koutou e arahi atu ana tēnea o ngā kaupapa, tēnea o tō tātau iwi, i roto o tūranga, o roto o te tai rāpiti. Koea nō rā tēnei tātau mihi a tēnā ki a koutou e a kufaia, e a kukoka, e o tira e a kukarangatanga maha, E aku pāpā, e aku tuakana, tai ngātina ki ngā whānau katoa, ki ngā hapu katoa o roto i tēnei o tō tātau iu. Kia hai, kia whakāta ai tātau, ngā paenga kei roto i o tātau whānau i roto i o tātau maro. Hei aha, hei whakāta anō tēnā o te rongo, o te rongo mau, o te rongo pai, tēnei ko te marae roa, o rongo marae roa, o te ranga marae katoa o rongo whakāta. Kā mihia. O ti rā ki te tēpū, ti moai koutou, amo koutou, ngā kai whakahaele, ngā kai whakarite, ngā kai whakahiki i te wairua o tēnā o tēnā, kia hai, kia whakatakoto ai te koha o te aroha, ki roto i tēnā whare, ki roto i tēnā whare, nō reira kā nui te mihia, hei aha, hei mārama tanga mā tātau, hei oranga kai te hara, hei oranga tonu kai te hara mai. Nō rei rā ko tēnei, a nei e tohu o tamanui te rā e kōrero hia ke nei tātou. A nā ka puta tamanui te rā, ka puta anō rā tātou ki te amā. Nō rei rā kāre roa ko kōrero, o tēnā ki te whānau e mātaki maina, e whakarongo maina ki o koutou kāinga, ko tūhono mai rā ki tēnei o ngā huihuinga o, o hou, o koutou, o tātou. Tēnei anō rā, hei aha, kia ki te ai tūrā tātou, kia rungwai a tātou, kei te aha tātou i roto, e ngā marama, i roto i ngā wiki, i roto i ngā rā, kei te tū mai i moe o tātou waro. Kia hai, kia rongo ai, ngā mahi kua o tia, kua o tia e tātou, ngā painga kua o tia e tātou, ngā pauaka kua, kua puta nei i roto i ngā marae kāinga, ngā kai, ngā taonga hāpai i te oranga tonu tanga o te tangata. Nō rira, kā rewa ku kore, kā nui te mihi ake, kia tātou katoa, Kā puta, kā ora, i roto i tēnei ao marama. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou.
ko wehe tu ra i te mate i ta o ti ra i wehe tu ni moho ne ya ta ta ra ta te ra ta te ngo mate ki ra ta 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 ma ta mo biho ra ma hu ta ngai ho ya ra ta ma te na ku tu te na ku tu ma hu yo ma hu yo ah tu ra ah pa pa ta ha ah na me he ki a ku i te ah Whakapai i tēnei hui, uh, kia ora koutou katoa, uh, nau mai, hana mai, uh, te huia iwi nō no te iwi o rongo whakāta. Uh, nice to see everybody's faces face to face. Uh, nice to see uh, us all out of our bubbles, so welcome to the huia iwi po rongo whakāta iwi trust. Uh, the agenda items which have previously been circulated, we did have a handout but some of the information provided is incorrect, so rather than try and distinguish which information we should have, we've just not provided the handout. So the agenda and all the items will be on the uh, slide. Uh, so these are the items we're going to have a quarter or about today, but firstly, do we have any apologies that anyone wishes to table? <coughs> kia ora, tēnā moe tada. April Sewer. April Sewer, kia ora. Francis. Oh, Francis. Sorry, Mum. Here. Mum. Mum, Sue Brown. Brown. Annie Brown. Annie Brown, yes, kia ora, thanks. Peter Brown. Peter Brown. Tracy Tungi, hi there. Nicole. Oh, yeah, sorry. Hi. You got all those bits? Yeah. Can someone just move those? Apologies. Well, I'm happy to move. Kia ora. Second. Kia ora. All those in favour, team aye. 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 Kao re. Kao. <coughs> Before you go into the agenda, Madam Chair, could I ask that an item be included in the agenda? Because there's going to be a tucker during the week, and that is about the installation of the replicas of the endeavour. Yeah. I think it should be a discussion by our EWI. We'll put on the GB, is that right? Mm. I was going to raise it, so come on. Um, okay, so let's um, firstly just uh, give you a broad base of the response in respect of uh, COVID-19 uh, and uh, particularly the Rungapakad EWI Trust response. Um, and, and obviously there's been some comms in respect of uh, what's occurred and there's been some communication through the social media. Uh, but just to summarise really um, what the response has been. Um, and we're happy to, are you happy to present this on or would you like me to do it? I'm happy to. Uh, so uh, let's just talk about the office challenges, so uh, obviously staff having to work from home, all that associated workplace stuff, uh, which um, uh, the GM worked through with staff, uh, but the challenge for the postal service and what we had to do in respect of providing that service, uh, the response that became a collective tight uppity response, uh, our association with the health provider, particularly Tūranga Health, um, but also our associated Tūranga Iwi, um, and the food parcels, the heating response, uh, the harm in respect of the potential for uh, a s exaggerated social harm that was, sorry, family harm that was occurring in homes that actually wasn't a major impact for Rung Fagadas and Iwi. Can we go back to the other page? Thanks, Bex. Um, and all the health response in respect of flu vaccinations, getting tested for COVID, uh, being able to access hygiene packs. So there was a whole associated response uh, that I would have to say through COVID-19, we work collectively rather than trying to duplicate efforts. Uh, there certainly was uh, firstly a uh, response collectively for all the four iwi that were involved, but uh, major 
association for us with our own health provider and the ability to work in respect of uh, Tūranga Health and where we're going and how we were accessing uh, to the health response particularly. Um, there were some responses that were marae based but because uh, Runga Whakara Iwi Trust had an oversight in respect to them we had to assist in respect of some of the responses that were provided. So there is, and the food that came out yesterday was actually marae based as opposed to the iwi collective based but because we had a, a logistics process in place we just uh, assisted and sought help when we could provide for marais. Can I have something to say about that, Madam Chair? I, I, hear, I hear what you say, that it was marae based, but it actually affected our iwi. So we, you know, in terms of the food job that was done by the marae, it actually affected our iwi of Umukata by quite a, a large sum of people that never received it. And you know, I would hate to think that that kind of thing happens again and again. Yeah, when we got the last drop, very good, everybody got it. This drop, Harbour Sakatoa Road never got it. That's why there was a little drop yesterday. But a half of Sakatoa Road never got it. Why cannot a uh, Wainaki Road never got it? And probably Tarai Valley never got it and the town didn't get it. So my query is, you know, there, there was a lot of drops, but where did they go? Madam Chair, can I just... <coughs> Kia ora tātou, tēnā koe i te tungane a taharākau mō tōmu he kia mātou i tēnei ata. Just to pick up on what Moira has said, throughout the last three months, Rungu Whakata along with our tūranga Whanaunga and also Ngāti Pro by way of Toi Tu organised for collective distributions across the whole of Tairawhiti. They organised hygiene packs sourced through Fano Order. They organised food packs which we negotiated through our local civil defence. We were in total control of those distributions and we organised those distributions on the basis of what we called our kuru paunamu. And that was information we received from our health services providers, our social services providers and our own iwi register. So we were looking for the kuru paunamu were classified as people that were 65 plus, that were, had chronic health um, conditions and also uh, had families that were obviously in distress. So those were the kuru paunamu. That's who the iwi distribution network distributed to. And as Moira said, each iwi used its own logistical infrastructure and that primarily was the likes of Beck and Sammy Joe, um, Samuel and other staff members. That was different from the recent mid, uh, meat packs that have been organised. That was organised as a separate activity and as Moira said, the trust became involved only because the organisers of that delivery didn't have the infrastructure to deliver. But when our troops went to get this consignment for Rungawhakata, they were so told, here are the packs for Whakatō Marae or Pāho Marae. They never were given the opportunity to negotiate how much Rungawhakata would get. They were just told, here's the packs. So that is quite a different distribution mechanism from the one that Rungawhakara Iwi Trust was actively involved in terms of ensuring the coverage and distribution that um, most of our whānau enjoyed for the first two months of COVID. So I just want to say it was out of our control how many packs we received. Our staff did their best by way of referring to those three criteria to try and get those distributions out. Yeah, I take all those points, I do, because I saw all that happen. But it's just that when you get about 60 families that misses out, 
That's another issue. So, and so, <laughs> so what I suggest you do, because there's two more drops, drops to come, as you see in those names of those 60 families have missed out to office. Because most of our information comes from what we get through the Marae base. So I want to make a recommendation, Madam Chair, that everything pertaining to our Mokara area goes through one way. You know, there don't want too many people involved because that's where we all miss out. You know, the whole town never got this. Yeah, I'm it's not sure. That, uh, uh, we won't have a solution because we can't provide to everybody, so we have limited numbers. It was a Friday night. It had been raining all week. It was cold. It was wet. It was miserable. It was dark. And there was a knock on my door, and these two angels <laughs> bought me a parcel. I really appreciated being remembered. I really appreciated. And they, they were angels. So Kiora, whoever was responsible, thank you. Yeah, the solution is is not within the control of the Iwi Trust for the Marae distribution. Because it is the responsibility of Marae's to make the decision. Yeah, I find it hard because, you know, the Marae is us, is, is our Iwi as well. And, and for me, that's why I think that um, the committee that is organising us should be the venue, the, the venue where everything should go. Then we all know what's going on. Because yeah. we're hearing different things about different jobs and, and you get to say, gee, but nobody in the town got it. Mm. Uh, well, what's the, what's the thinking from the Marae perspective? Because we can provide every trust, but you know, I was involved in all of the solution. Their first distribution was a problem because of the meat that they received. It was a big problem because the meat was... Ah, <laughs> 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 it's okay. It was, they were big pieces. You could, you could distribute the smaller pieces, but not the big pieces. But um, if they think it not, it was easier, it was ma more manageable. Somebody said that it wasn't as nice as the first one. <laughs> <laughs> but it was manageable because they were small parcels, so um, we did deliver to our <coughs> roads, uh, and some who didn't get it last time got it this time, only because they went on our list, and it's possibly because like, my neighbour is not affiliated to Lumpakata, and they got it dropped this time but not the last one. But I'm just saying in defence of the Malaya distribution in the first drop, the big pieces of meat. You had a big mutton or what in a legal. It was just, yeah. Yeah, so I suppose I, my, I can, yeah, my question to you, Auntie Wai, is uh, were you happy that you had the autonomy to make the decision or were you prepared to come back to the Eritrus? That's the question. <coughs> I, I represent the Manajuki Marae for two drops. Uh, when we put in our application for what we wanted to do, the numbers we wanted, we actually didn't get to it through our whole plan out the window. Then we <coughs> were not thinking. Uh, we did the best we could with the resources that were given to us. We tried our best and like thinking the big pork leaves in it, we should have taken them and got them all cut up with a spread. Mm -hmm. um, we could have taken them to the butcher, home kill, they could have cut them off. It, it was a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, we tried to, um, actually 60 packs, they would have covered the whole of Dodo Valley, Wainaki, and up to the rears. And we, that was our, we, we tried to work on a hunting basically. But unfortunately, like I said, we ended up uh, we ended up only getting 14 packs. And then yesterday's drop was even better, so we still targeted those ones, and we couldn't go any, anywhere out of our hunting way. We, we did the town drops. Um, we serviced seven families in the town that have been involved with Mother Chicken Marae, and, and uh, we did the big drops to major things that we had bigger bombs, 
they got more than it, it, it was open. But we, we worked on the basis to find out the true numbers of people who were sick in that through our whole thing. So I don't want to wait for all that to be missed out. But it's just what it is. But the, you were, the Marae was happy to do the distribution as opposed to RIT making? Um, my opinion, I wasn't really happy with what we were working with, but it was a start. All right. okay. And we had to focus on getting the people to fight, the planning to fight. You might be able to get into the cabinet and if that don't, you get your money. Kia ora. Yeah, so, so the role that really has been for the Trust is to provide the support if the marae ask for it. So some said, no, we're sweet, and some ask for help. Even the big trust, the even did with the big forces? <coughs> I had, uh, thank you very much, but I had to end up giving half my budget. Yeah, yeah, so did lots. Kia ora. Good day. I think, though, what, we could, what, we could, what the office has been trying to do is support and coordinate, but we can only do that as much as the marae want our support for coordination. And there's one thing I'm very clear on with our marae whanau is they don't need the iwi trust to do those types of distributions. They made that really clear in the model that's been discussed this morning, that they wanted to do that in their own right because they can and they didn't need the iwi trust. But there's always confusion about who's doing what and who gets what, and I just think this is there we've learnt lots through this COVID space around who's on registers, who's not on registers, who's engaged with the Iwi Trust, who's engaged with Tauranga Health. And so you've just identified there's another group that haven't been addressed through this space. So I think all we can do moving forward through, the, through these drops is continue to try and coordinate with the marae as best as we can, but also noting that they will tell us to get lost if they don't want our help and support because they don't need it. And I don't think that we should have to lead that if they want to do it themselves. Yes, yeah, Stacey, I've got another call, uh, part of um, To Kuri a tour time, <coughs> if they were given also the <coughs> things that Marae distribute to other people, Munro Street is a classic. Because I work down there, I haven't seen anybody come down Munro Street only because I was asked. And I see while I'm on my ship down Munro Street, I haven't seen any drop off. Only two down the house with their bucket that probably would have been probably the second week of COVID. And that's all I've seen. And one lady this morning at the laundry said, that's a lot of shit. And I said, why? Because she got F all and she behaves down Lytton Road. And she read it on Facebook. And she's 68. So you're right, Edna. There's some that are getting there and there's some that are some are getting triple double, you know. But well, I suppose it needs to be done hey, properly next time. We just don't want to have another COVID. So just to cover one restrict was covered by ProTech. Okay. So we made two deliveries and that was with Kai and Harvest. Just to let fun out. Anyway, all I can say about it, the people I talked off to, they were grateful. There's a lot of gratitude in the mm. community. Mm. But you know, you don't know this is why. Mm. Some people didn't miss out. Some people got six boxes, some got two, some got three. This is what's been happening. So how come people would, would one person get six boxes? She's not wrong. But we can never please anybody. Right. So at the end of the day, it lays at your marae. <laughs> Who are you giving it to? If people are missing out down the road, what's your marae? Who are they giving it to? Pakato, Manatuki, Ohako, Baho. They're nicely dead fellas. You're marae. But all I want to say is, she's not wrong. But you know, I've got a big bag of lollies. <laughs> My husband's on a diet. <laughs> 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 you know? Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. <coughs> my point, yeah. my point yeah. is the people that missed out, that's all. Yeah, that's yeah. really my point. <laughs> but you're not wrong. 
Do you want to Um, so I don't like share it, so we just see a few drop offs. I just want to say thank you for what you did for my mum and dad. Mm -hmm. And you know, under the circumstances, I think you did the best that you could. Mm -hmm. We've never done this before. This has never happened before. And the way that it was handled, I think, looks pretty admirable. You should all be proud of yourselves. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Jura. And thank you for my parents too. <laughs> Auntie uh, Moy, sorry, Auntie Moy, Jackie and I have been talking over the lockdown and it's just hard uh, really, but I think it's, Stacey, you're right, I think all Marae need to sit down and because we're looking at the geo geographic of, 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 of the Marae, so all of Tuaraki, all the way down to um, State Highway 5 or 2, um, and, but I think it need, we all might I need to sit down and say, well, where do you go from there to there, there to there? If this happens again, then that infrastructure um, is already set in place. Mm -hmm. Jackie and I have been talking about it, and we, we need to do some door knocking. You yeah. say, you know, can we put you on a register? If this happens again, we've got your details, we've got your contacts. Come on. Um, so we've been talking like that, Jackie and I. But I just said it's bigger than just Jackie and I. It's bigger than just Pahu, I think it's more of the five marae, mm -hmm. you know, even Tikuri. Mm -hmm. You need to sit down, what's their geographic um, sustenance, maintenance, I guess, what, and the people, no matter who they are, who they belong to, as long as they, they get a package, but we need to know who's in our, who's in our audience, I guess, and what, 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 they, what does that look like. So Jackie and I have been talking about, I think it needs to, needs to grow further, with um, Whakato, Mantuke, Ohako and Tukuri mm. and sit down and say, well, this is where Whakato is going to go, this is where Mantuke is going to go, uh, and maybe that's where Pahu can start off with where Mantuke finishes, wherever, Ohako, Pahakora. I'm just trying to find a solution. We're using one at the moment that's put a pool, which is really effective and easy. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, give us a year. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Just one of the things with the drops, you know, I, it was, we were told it was the road, but then in this last one, here, last night when we were doing, we had a couple of requests from town, from our people from town, so we included them um, in the town. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite sure if we're supposed to do that. But who would know this in your area would be your marae. Yeah. Right. And the people around your marae, they would know better. Oh no, that, that, that's old Joe, <laughs> Joe Blogs down the road. No, 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 they're parking. Who cares? Yeah. And I'm just that's saying, saying, saying about this, this town block too, yes. you know, yeah. we included a couple from town because... So let's, have, let's, let's get all the collective information after, uh, 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 I think we've got two more of those drops to go, so let's have a collective discussion through the office. And um, that's so. why I mentioned that we needed to be able to cover everybody within our company with party and Ironman inclusive. <laughs> But of course we're going to end up with four team, what are we? We had to readjust our team. Yeah. Anyway, it was hard. <laughs> just was need to get it right. And why not? Nothing. Why back to uh, the rear. Sorry, and next week I see our RIT working with the, those people to work out the numbers and work out the geographic, whatever, that situation is. <sighs> that's why I see RIT working with those bigger organisations saying, no, no, that's not enough. No, no, that's not enough. Da, 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 da. Well, Auntie Jackie became our liaison with the collective, so... Of course she did. And Bex. Kia ora, just again, to, to clarify, there were two distribution mechanisms. One that the trust was part of, and the trust based its numbers on our register and the information we got from Tūranga um, Health and also the Iwi Social Services. That's where we got our numbers for, and I think our numbers were about 80 or 100 or something like that. The marae drops in terms of the meat packs, um, the kiwi harvest, that was handled by um, one marae that was coordinating for all the marae across Tairapiti. We weren't involved in any of the decisions around who got what, um, we would have done it differently by way of using the same distribution mechanism we'd used and we would have worked with the marae to do that. Um, so I just want to be clear about what control 
the RIT Trust had and didn't have in terms of the two distributions mechanisms that occurred. I like your idea, Taha, around how, and you know, and as Chrissy has said, the Trust would be quite keen to support in whatever way might I want to um, to go about setting up a register or having those sorts of details around persons that the marae could be the key focus point for if COVID ever occurred again. Now I just also want to say that we got one letter from a Rural Fakata member living away from home who was concerned that we were only worrying about the people at home, the Rural Fakatas at home. And um, they were and they were, um, you know, they just said, you know, we live away from home, we've seen what's happening at home. We're not a family that, um, you know, would generally raise an issue like this, but they were saying, which I thought was correct, is, you know, even if the trust, and so that's an improvement we learnt. So one of our improvements was we, we needed to touch base with every wrong for part of person, irrespective of where they live. If we couldn't give them kai, then we could give them a karakia via our Facebook page or we could keep in touch with them. So we've all learned something through COVID and that's certainly one of the improvements for me, along with the Marae Register, is being touching base with every Wongafakata member, irrespective of where they are. And in any way, um, so with the Wellington Todahere, we asked them if they would ring around the Pakekea Rung Whakata Pakeke in Tāmaki, in Wellington, and you know, just, because actually just those phone calls as much as people turning up on your doorstep was what really counted for people. So um, yes, a lot of learnings, yes, still further improvements, but as has been said, we did the best under the circumstances with the resources we had. Um, okay, so so unless there's any more recorded or in respect to that particular topic, um, before I go on to the next agenda, on Kia ora, Samuel. Uh, kia ora, Mana. Um, yeah, I'd just like to uh, add, you know, this is all subject to a scenario, and the scenario this time was COVID-19. may not necessarily be COVID-19 next time. And so there's all sorts of other issues that come into the equation. And we really need to sit down and, um, and exhaust ourselves as to what the response is going to be. But each response to each scenario is quite unique. That's what's required. The next one may very well be this uh, Hikudoki trench out here, unpicking itself in a big tidal wave coming in here. So, you know, we need to be resilient in all situations. Food sovereignty comes into it. All sorts of things come into it. So how really um, in charge of our situation are we? when we're subject to uh, all the powers that be, supermarkets and corporations, etc., and we actually have the potential out there to take uh, full responsibility for <coughs> the situation. So, food for thought, and um, let's start looking at all the scenarios. Kia ora. <coughs> kia ora. Uh, and my apologies, uh, kia ora, Phil. Um, so, I should have started off with this process, but just um, a mihi to... Uh, the new trustee for representing Ohako Marae on the Rung of Gaurimi Trust. Um, kia ora. Uh, Phil Hokianga, so he called it Paku Kia ia. Sorry, Phil. Uh, kia ora, Fane. Uh, Phil Hokianga, toku ima. Uh, no hiri tinei, no nga ti rung whakata. Uh, me, uh, uh, Nati Ruapani. Ko uh, uh, ki homa hokianga. Uh, hokianga. Uh, Rauwa ko uh, Nelly Hinireta Hokianga ni uh, Kauka. Uh, tōku matua. Uh, ki tau tōku papa. Ko uh, Kini Amini uh, Hokianga, uh, Rawa Ko uh, Matua Kore uh, Waipara, uh, Kitao Toku uh, Mama, Ko uh, Urumu Kauka, uh, Rawa Ko uh, Ani Paki Kaipa. 
Uh, lovely to be here, Fine. Uh, it's been a steep uh, learning process for me. Uh, this is my second uh, hui. Um, but it's also an opportunity to uh, really see where I can provide support to uh, Ohaku Moro. Uh, and lovely learning around Whakapapa, especially our Waipara site. And uh, what is happening uh, with our land, Tūkai uh, Iti, and uh, all these other aspirations that we have. So, to the rest of the uh, EV Trust members, is, there is a lot to learn, uh, but I am prepared to, uh, <coughs> to uh, support and help, and uh, hopefully I can bring some school sets to, uh, uh, to our organisation or to the Trust. Nami. Yeah. Kia ora, Phil. <coughs> um, okay, so the next uh, COVID-19 response is the Tairapiti Tuitu Tairapiti Collective Response. Um, and Rungukara along with the other four, uh, other three iwi representation have been part of the collective iwi trios involved in the civil defence response for COVID-19. Uh, and you would have heard some of the corridor in respect of what we provided. So the, the word that you got was through the collective response by talking to uh, the wood uh, people from Ta Manahiri and getting a contingent of people from uh, Rungutkata and Ta Manahiri to do the actual chopping of the wood and distributing. But that came as a collective Tairapiti response, as did the food packs and the civil defence food packs that came through in which we delivered over 1,400 of those from Portaka to, um, to Rangiwaho. Uh, and the hygiene packs came through the Fano Order Collective that was also a collective uh, and that connected the two main Māori health providers. So the last component of Tuitu Tairapiti is the recovery response of which we were collectively involved <coughs> with, uh, particularly the GDC, in talking about what the recovery for all the components of health, uh, economic, social, etc., for our particular district. Uh, and we are currently working through that process, which is called Rau Tipu Rau Ora and there will be a response collectively for the regional response of which the four iwi in which Rungafgaard is part of them is part of that response. I, um, I heard the Minister say, the Minister of um, Whānau Order, Minister of Emergency Services, I listened to him she said it two Sundays ago on the Māori program with uh, Scotty oh, Morrison. Henny. Henny. Yeah. Henny. 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 And also Calvin. And they actually said 136,000, 136 million was given to Māori. Yeah, in the budget. Yeah, in the budget, yeah. So, yeah, in the budget for COVID. So, you know, I'm going to ask now, 136 million, you know, we need to make sure that we are keeping into the right venue for get our share. Because he, he announced that, then I heard Mika on Thursday say the same thing at Parliament. So, there's quite, quite a lot of money yeah, rushing yeah. around. Yeah. And, with, and the, besides that, COVID, there's the final water money. just make a couple of additional comments. One is that the Toitu Tairawhiti Collective is probably across the country the iwi involvement in the development of a regional uh, response and recovery plan is probably unprecedented. So Rungu Whakata participate in, in that uh, with, alongside the other three iwi. No other iwi in the country have had that level of involvement. A, Moira was our representative, so she represented all the iwi 
on the Senior Civil Defence Regional Committee. She attended week daily meetings, supported by Ronald and, um, and other CEs at the executive level. Iwi across the country were scrambling to be even recognised, let alone be engaged, let alone occupying such critical parts of the decision making. So, um, you know, so I think Toitu offers uh, really a, a recognition to Moira's leadership and being our face on that committee all the way through COVID. Um, but the point is that we have had an, inf an influence and an opportunity to shape how this region recovers and reshapes itself going into the future by way of collectivising our political and cultural capital as iwi, as mana whenua in this town. And it is unprecedented. And so I think that um, when people ask what's the value of us doing this stuff together, as opposed to being on our own, it's because this is the type of mileage we can get. And um, it will uh, bode well for the level of influence that the mana whenua iwi in Tūranga have going forward, in which the Rekpaka Endeavour scenario is exactly a point uh, that we need to um, address and we have addressed. And in that way, you, you had a council make a decision last week that overturned or rescinded their decision this week. Why did they do that? Partly because of all the furore it caused, but also because they recognised what was even more meaningful to them was the relationship they were starting to develop with iwi. And they finally recognised that's more of value than this nonsense around trying to reposition um, the endeavours in town. So I, I just say that one of the major gains for us is really our continued exercising of influence in this in, in Tūranga and across Tairawhiti. Kia ora. Can we have the next one? Thanks, Bex. <coughs> uh, and here's some of the data in respect of uh, the swabbing, the flu jabs that we worked through with Tūranga Health Group. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if you're aware but uh, Tairapiti District Health Board was firstly the highest contingent of Māori who were swabbed, uh, tested. In the country. In the country. The, the, the Tairapiti Hau Order had the highest flu vaccination rates per head uh, of person population in the country, the highest Māori vaccination rate across the country and the highest rate of people, community people, that were tested for COVID across the country. And that's because they were able to team with Tūranga Health, our Iwi Social Services, our Ngāti Prauhau Water to the North, and it was that collaboration that resulted in more Māori in this town being vaccinated and protected against COVID than any other time or place um, any other time in our history in terms of the levels of vaccination but in terms of coverage of our people more so than anywhere else in the country. I just like to take my hat off to Tuna now because they were on the move pretty smart when they did all of us in Tuna. I just say a few words. <coughs> Actually, um, RIT representative on Tūranga Health, I'd just like to say that I agree with you, Edna. Tūranga Health has done a fantastic job, but it's not a job that they've just started yesterday. It's a job that they started a long time ago. That's right. And the job that Tūranga Health started was to engage with Fano, Hapu and Iwi, not just with individuals like you find through the medical practices, but with our Fano, with our Iwi. So the only things that um, and it's come up here this morning in the discussions too, where things may have not been as, um, as well done as they could have been, and it comes back to registration, the registration of our people. And we've all touched on it, and, and, um, and Taharaka, when you touched on it in terms of a plan going forward, 
to actually re to to find out those registrations and to have people registered with the marais, with the hapu, with the iwi, <coughs> that's what really counts. And once those registrations started coming in, once those mm -hmm. gaps were found, those gaps were filled very quickly. So um, I agree, Tūranga Health has done an outstanding job and they will continue to do an outstanding job because what COVID-19 has done is it has thrown up opportunities. Mm -hmm. Opportunities for organisations that um, excel, that weren't recognised before the crisis, but with the crisis, that recognition has come through very strongly, um, especially from Hauora Tairawhiti, and it's throwing up opportunities for ongoing partnerships, ongoing jobs, and ongoing um, relationships that will help our people. Kia ora. <coughs> Uh, and certainly, I think that what COVID-19 has done for uh, Rungutata Iwi is actually ask the questions of the health provider and say, well, actually, who are you delivering to and where's it going? Because it's the first time we've had data like this for a long time. So, kia ora. We all know and see the work they do, but actually, in respect of how it aligns with where we're going. Is and I totally took all more Heidi's um, uh, comments too on where we're representing us and that, at that high level. Um, well done, Maura. Kia ora. Um, okay, so um, any questions or queries? Ka uh, So the next part, uh, which we're going to uh, just really give you a bit of an overview of is, uh, so where's Rungafkari we trust uh, post-COVID-19? Keep going. Uh, and so what we're going to do, um, and, and collectively the trustees will talk through this, is just give you an idea of what some of the work we had to do and some of the, the thinking that has to go on that we've had to do as trust and where we're up to in respect of uh, where to next and the strategy going forward. Uh, so I'd have to say that uh, in uh, February last year we were in a pretty good place, we had our priorities set and we knew what was happening for the next four months, etc. and the next... Uh, 18 months in the next 10 years. Uh, and then along came a, a coronavirus, uh, and so the trustees have been in a, a phase of rethinking in respect of priorities. So we uh, got together, do you want to take over or should I just keep going? And then, yeah. So we uh, decided to get some expertise in respect of firstly uh, what the economy, uh, what the economic uh, outlook for this country uh, both nationally and internationally is. Uh, we also asked our financial people to review our financial risks. Uh, we particularly have a good relationship with the Hilmaria Thank you. Who uh, we asked to assist us with an investment plan uh, for our assets about a year and a half ago. So she's a senior economist with Bill, but, but she has a relationship with us so that when we go and say, how are you doing, that she's happy to help from the gutter. Uh, so what she did for us was basically say, uh, so first of all, to look at where you're going, you need to s decide uh, where are you at in respect of what sort of liquidity do you have, what does that look like in the Rungafgadi trust space. Uh, and so then we went to the Deloitte's to say what does our financial outlook look like. So obviously that's a, a, a pretty important both short term in respect of uh, the ability to continue our operations. Uh, she also said that we should explore what government support is available out there. So what's the opportunity in the 130 million that um, Eden has quoted that, that ministers have said is available? What opportunities are uh, in that space? What does our asset base look like? What's our income in respect of where it's coming from? And how do we build resilience in the new COVID-19? So those were the four main areas that she asked us to focus on. Uh, and I have to say that we're fortunate that we have Stacey who's currently in the middle of all this work with her role in the provincial growth who was able to provide some, um, some guidance and sense of where the Wellington thinking was happening and what was happening in that space as well. Um, and from there, the 
role of the trustees was to look at each of our POs and decide what our priorities were and what we wished to explore and work on. But we actually had to go one step back and look at the high level strategy and was it still relevant to post COVID-19. <coughs> What's your high strategy on this? Yep. Come on. So I think just um, to summarise the that level four lockdown period, um, I think there's a few things to note. The first time we all zoomed happened pretty easily, which was quite a surprise because none of us really like emails. Um, within two weeks, I think of level four, we had outlined a plan to plan for how we're going to deal with COVID. <clears throat> and so Maura's just gone through four key steps. One was to stop and review. What are our priorities right now? And are they still relevant? Noting everything's changed across the globe. What does your financial position look like? How do you optimise government support moving forward? And then how do we build a plan of resilience for Rungo Whakata? And so what we've completed is the first three and we've had a look at what we think are the priorities that we want to review and focus on moving forward. And then we want to build this plan of resilience, but like the other annual plans and strategies we've written, we always need to come back and sense check. Is what we think right? Is this what our people actually want us to do? So mum's just asked, where's your marae strategy? That was a huge topic of discussion for us around how do we, in the next six to 12 months, have a really focused and deliberate effort towards supporting marae? And what does that look like? And that's essentially where we're at. So the next step for us is going to have to be about engaging with the marae to understand what can we do over the next six to 12 months to help you do what you want to do. In the same way, we've also heard for a long time about the issue around intellectual property being something that everyone gets hit with. What does that mean for us as a priority? What about all of the kaitiaki work we're doing at Te Whiru Whiru, Rākau Kāka, Waikanae? How do we take a more deliberate approach in that space? And then also, at the same time, optimise government investment, where there's a big focus on workforce development. So that's essentially what we've done. That was our last board session, which was two weeks ago. Um, the officers pulled together an outline of where we landed. What we mostly did was cut off all the fat and take away all the noise that's probably kept us um, spread too thin across our priorities. And so now we're figuring out what is the plan over the next four weeks, over the next six weeks, and then over the next three months. So we're looking at what's the, what's the deliverables in the next quarter. Some of the new things we've identified under our PO we need to come back out and talk to our people. True. So what we're essentially at now is this point of we're ready to come out and, and figure <coughs> out how we take this, how do we see this waka together over the next six months, basically? And is what we think still relevant? And is that what you think is important for us to focus on? And that's what we wanted to begin this discussion with today, <coughs> noting that as soon as we put something on paper, it looks like it's a given, it's not, it's just what we're talking about. Can I say something? We've talked about our input into the lies, we've talked about our input with the government, but we've missed out the farming. Now I'm not going to preach, but I belong to a church that tells us that we need to be self-sufficient, mm -hmm. that we need to have a 72-hour pack ready, and I've got one at my front door in the event of a tidal wave, a tsunami, whatever, so that when I rush out my front door, I just grab my thing and take it. Climate with, change. With pardon? Climate change. Anything. Any crisis. <coughs> the other thing is we're also encouraged to put away two years of food. Now, I know that sounds difficult, but it isn't. My husband was off work for 18 months. We had about seven children at home at the time, and we lived off the food that we had saved over the years. And we can do it by just every week put aside $5 to buy specials. So I think we're missing out on the farmer. 
we need to have gardens. And it was kind of, I was sort of picked that up when Sam was talking. Even if we tell our people, just grow one silver beet plant in your garden, that's kai. That's not a principle that it, that's unfamiliar to us as Maori. Mm. So while we're talking about Jonah and whatever, we need to look at supporting the farmer too and, and supporting them and developing skills so that we can survive whatever. Sorry if I sound preachy, but No, no. So so the some of these are the same and some have altered the reprioritization in respect of the five posts. So the or or Oranga is still the same, so understanding what contributes to a well Rungawhakata person or Rungawhakata well-being. Uh, and so some of the quarter of the aunties just talked about in respect of self-sufficiency. Uh, uh, but part of that is, we've already uh, spoken that previously, is actually, so what, <coughs> what, does a, what do you think a well Rungawhakata person is? Because it's not the Treasury Wellbeing Survey or the... Uh, local uh, Gisborne District Council, it's actually what we as Longwhakata here we think are well Longwhakata persons. Uh, and certainly COVID has introduced the ability for us to talk to the people that are providing the different components of service delivery, like uh, Trotec, like Tūranga Health, and what that space looks like. Can I say something? You know, I'm probably give myself burned, uh, something used to that. But I'm more high when we talk, talk, talk. Our legs, twenty. Our come on, come let's talk. And our eyes, we still haven't done anything. That should be top priority on your agenda. You're not listening to our people. <coughs> You're our leader, Laura. You're the chairman of Royal Wakata Trust. We've talked about our marais over and over. I'm sick of GDC. I'm sick of people who are trying to claim our lands. We tell families, you need help. We all need help. The trust is not listening to us. What are you going to do about it? Because I'm poor. I've had enough. You trust me, you've got portfolios. What are you doing? <coughs> You're our leader, Laura. You need to put what we really want on the agenda and talk to it. Can we finish? I'm not really pleased with what's been put on the agenda. Our Marais is a priority. Don't you put me on TV? You know, we're too long ago. I'm Laura. Hey, what's the policies? Tell your own, you tell me. Because no one's come back to us. What's the policy for our people to get their houses done? There's a lot of us in one day here who need it. <laughs> no one's come back to us. I come back to us, please. Health and safety. No one's come back to us. Trophy. What are you doing? Please, for once, stop the talking and do something about it. GDC, I'm sick of it. Kia ora. So that's all I have to say. I may have been a few times, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So number one, the marais. Yes, number one, our marais. We need help. We're sick of talking. Our toilets need doing. Our buildings need doing. They're leasing. We've got no property. For Pete's sake, do something. I'm sick of talking. Kia ora. Kia ora. <laughs> Yeah, and I'd just like to follow through. Mine is housing. Look at buying land, paying papa kaina. You know, the party is offering those cabins. And there's a few, I won't mention where they are. There's some in Munro Street. People can't afford to get into their own homes, but that might be the next stage. We have to bring these little cabins that we have to pay rent for every week. Hey, why don't we look at building two little cabins ourselves? Two bedrooms, putting it, putting it off the section. So I might have to move out of my house and give it to one of my children because times are going to get hard in the next 10, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Council already know about spatial planning for Gisborne, and we're going to be 
having to contend with migrants. They're going to see New Zealand as the place to be during COVID-19. We're going to have to be inundated with refugees, you name it. And he's a well-known um, American, not American, English person. He's on the radio. And I was watching him on Duncan Ghana. He's only been living in New Zealand for three years. He's not he's got got a credible person to No, he was, on, <laughs> he was on his program, Mora, yeah. and he is a poet. Sorry. And he loves it in New Zealand, and he stayed in Makana. And then Duncan Garner said, oh, you should get an award for being here in New Zealand. The cheek of it. Mm. Right, this is Duncan Garner. Oh. Right. But look, I have to get serious. Look at Papa Kaina for the up-and-coming generation. There's a lot of our kids that want to come home. There's a lot that already home, but it's the housing. Look at buying somewhere. I had to go to Tarahu who's down our place. They opposite me, Colin Jones. I said, Colin, they're looking for land. Oh, <laughs> in for What's it here? Tarahu. Oh, if they can buy it, then there's an option. With an RO mutter, why we think logic about it, I don't know. Kia ora. Uh, so, so there is some housing uh, development being explored. It's part of the, the next tranche in respect of what it looks like from the trustees' perspective. So all we're doing is providing with a broad base of, in the sense of our priorities, but there is some detail that we're yet to work through. I think one of the key things with these priorities is we need to flip the triangle upside down and really home in on on our whānau and find out what's happening out there with them, what do they actually need, and how we can support them as all the Kadiri we trust. Then we'll put our priorities together and say what are the priority needs for, for all the Kadiri we going through. Because I get uh, people are getting sick and tired of coming to the trip, of organisations saying, oh, we think this is best for you. Because at the end of the day, that's it. Who are you to tell me how to live my life? Yeah. <coughs> uh, so, in response to the challenge for the Marae development, uh, ROT is committed to <coughs> assist the five Rungafgara Iwi Marais to be part <coughs> of the uh, PDF response for some funding uh, resource that's available for Marais. So, um, uh, the office is going to resource you as a marae to be able to see if you can get some information available to be able to be part of some opportunities for marae development through some funding that's available at the moment. So just to be clear, um, so that's the five more for Carter marae and what information we are about to send the forms out if you haven't already sent the, if you haven't already received the forms. And the forms is basically just asking each marae whether they want to be part of the collective, and there's a consent form, and then a one pager for the marae to describe their project. Now, what we're hearing, and you know, the criteria changes every 12 hours, templates change every 24 hours, but the latest intel is that um, we've got till Thursday morning at 9 o'clock to get all our applications in and I'm coordinating the 66 Tairapati Marae that are putting all in, putting their applications in as part of the collective. Every Marae has the opportunity to say, no, Kate Pai, we can put our own application in, or we've already done it, or, yep, we want to be in. Um, to date, from the, uh, we've received feedback that um, the majority, if not all of our Marae, want to be in. Uh, so what we need on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock is the consent form agreeing to be uh, part of the collective, if you so choose. We need your one page, a description of your project, and we need quotes. We need quotes for the work that you um, want done, the materials, the equipment that needs to be hired, the machinery, all of it. You can go for re-roofing, re-piling, building ablution facilities, all of that, but you have to have, if you're building um, an ablution block or um, a new dining room, you have to have the consents. We have to be able to prove to the funders that that project can start next week or the following week. 
That's, that, and so what Moira said is our, our trustees have agreed, let's work with our marae to get them best dressed for Thursday the 11th in terms of helping those that have got plans but no quotes. Um, looking at ways in which we could discuss with the GDC how we might get some building consents or resource consent stuff fast tracked. Um, that's the sort of support the trust wants to provide to our marae to get the five marae in that running. We've heard, you know, funding availability is anything up to and not official, but you know, that's. The headline is you can get anything between 200 and 500k. If you've got your work project ready to start one week, two week, three weeks time, uh, with all the right um, quotes and consents and all of those things. So that's what we're wanting to help Tom and I do by next Thursday. But I think two things on that. One is the Rungu Whakata Marae in the collective are our priority and um, the time frame is set. Uh, I think the reality for our marae to be able to work through that is what we want to help by way of support from the Iwi Trust. Whether Thursday happens or not I think is redundant and that we we'll still need to do these plans to develop the marae and so what we need to do is work at a pace that works for marae that's not reacting to government timelines and government time frames but it's probably also important to let our marae know here's the dates that we've been given their targets that they can be moved so i think in reality some marae will be ready to go maybe Thursday and some won't, but that doesn't mean those that aren't ready aren't going to be a part of the conversation for development. Yeah. So are you saying, Amor, that we have to all our quotes and costings and plan done by Thursday? Mm -hmm. um, There's an opportunity to... Yes. That's a tight, tight frame, mate. Yeah. Well, well that yeah. is, but this is the opportunity just presented in the last fortnight, so one would think that Mariah has been working on their plans and quotes and stuff for some time. This is just a new vehicle to tap into to help us get to the destination of rebuilt, opt functional, fully functional Marae. So, so all I'm saying is that um, we appreciate that uh, you know some of our Marae haven't got those pieces of paper and we'll just throw whatever resource we have as a trust to help every Marae in Rawapakata get us close to getting over that line and having all the documentation they need. So one of the things we talked about is getting um, a tradesperson in and just say, look, we'll pay you for three, four days to just go around the North Park and like and help them get their quotes, write up the quotes, you know, cost out projects, if that's what the Marae need. Um, with, as I said, with the resource, it, it's easier if you've got projects that don't need building or resource consent because that's going to be the time consuming one. If you have got your building consent application into the GDC, we can say they file their application, uh, the likelihood is they'll receive approval within two weeks. Um, so we need as much information. If you don't get all your quotes in, we've probably got another week to try and get the bits and pieces that aren't in, but we're trying to get as much in to give our Alma and I the best chance to getting the optimum money from this particular fund. I think our starting point would be to get our Marae people together and work through some of that detail. And the offer side of it, and the office, as trustees have discussed, <coughs> for resources to support that discussion in detail. I would have thought that each of you are elected from the Marae, that you actually would have already been talking to your Marae. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. 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 In lockdown. Yeah. Yes, the yeah. 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 coming up. We um, think you to take into consideration on what we were just coming off. Oh, look, too I, much pressure. Oh, yeah. I just yeah. think, so what we've discussed is you know, if we, I think there's a couple of things. Um, the optimising working capital that's being made available for some of those basic repairs up at Amarai is there's an opportunity for us to help facilitate 
marae to access that. How we're going to do that is something that we're going to have to work through, I think, through the office with our marae committees and the trustees. What that looks like in terms of delivering something within a tight time frame is just what we'll need to work through, I think. But just what I'm really <coughs> conscious of is that's not the that's not the be all and end all that Thursday date. That's just update. That's all. So I'm just saying we can if so I would just be thinking for for example, money to Kimurai, you fellas are ready to go. I don't know why we couldn't meet the Thursday deadline. Yeah, That's I'm all I'm saying, and with the right level of support mm -hmm. to help facilitate that, we could do it. <clears throat> but we don't have to. So this yeah. is what I'm saying, like we're going to have to work through a process that works for all five marae, because all five marae are going to be different, we know that. Yeah, and our approach yeah. will be different, You're and what the priorities are will be yeah. different. Yeah. 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 I've been talking for yeah. quite a few years now, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hence the, <coughs> the bye bye, hence the... the, the small, smaller, minor uh, projects, we've been doing that ourselves, but we've got a short-term plan and we've got a long-term plan. And so it's just a matter of updating those. And so I'm sure that um, Aho, as again, like Manjuki, I don't want to do that, would be a problem. But it's just, we've been thinking different. Yeah, it's just that I'm, uh, awesome. I don't make it. Uh, anyway, um, probably are we, won't take us on, but the thing is, we want to be on all on the same walker. Yeah. We don't want other right to lag behind us. Yeah. We need to go to force. Yeah. yeah, but we're at different stages of development. Yeah. So, so Fakatua could say we've got a quote to redo the roof for our Fatunui and a quote to redo the ablation dock. So that's ready to go. But actually, the opportunity to get the fencing done, to do a ma, to do a, a garden, to do some replanting down the bank is what Thursday offers, so that means yeah, we need to get some people to do that work for us. Good point, that's interesting as well. But like I said, we have managed to we have a comprehensive report, the report, everything done for us. We don't want other than the to lag behind, we want to go as one unit. They can at least give us that uh, opportunity on you know, COVID. Let all the other to catch up, be with us. Well, I just think you need to take the opportunity that's there, yeah. so I'm not... If you wait for all of us, we might be still here in five years' time. Yeah. No, no. no Uncle, I think that's the point around what Auntie Marsha just said, which is first we need to bring all the marae together to have a joint-up conversation. And then what it looks like after that conversation, I'm sure will be determined at that conversation. How can you determine well, that's going to be the reason why we bring all the marae together to have a conversation. They haven't got their trustees. How can you determine them? They haven't had their books audited. None of my business, but that's all to doubt. Well, that's for the marae to have that conversation. I'm just saying, if we want to do this, here's an opportunity. Here's the plan. We'll work with the office and our marae to call a hui, to have a conversation. Yeah. And then what it looks like in terms of next steps is what the purpose of that hui is for. Takuni had all their plans. But this is a great opportunity now, hui are we to challenge Takuni to say yeah, kia ora. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. come on. Yeah. Kia ora, te atu. Kia ora, whanau. Kia ora, The problem, sorry. Can I just, um, can I just say, uh, look, I want to make a statement about COVID-19. And COVID-19 threw up a whole lot of things. What I see out of COVID-19 is opportunities. Yes. And the opportunities I think we should be looking at as an iwi kato, as an iwi kato, is not how we can't do things, but how we can do things. And we've got to really focus on that because this is our opportunity to go forward positively, working together and say we can do this because all of a sudden there's an opportunity to get resources to allow us to do it. So it's a mindset, and we've got to reset our mindset in terms of what we can do rather than what we can't do and what's stopping us. And we need to climb on board that wagon and say we can do this because our ancestors did it. Our ancestors did it to bring us to this point right here, right now, and it's our opportunity to go forward with that attitude. So what Taharako just said about um, Tapaho, yes, and all of them and I, 
all of them and I have got their plans. There are different stages and we need to progress those plans as a group but focusing on what each marae actually needs. And so this is our opportunity. But what I will say also with um, Tamora in terms of the high level um, uh, committees that she's in, I saw on the TV the other night that the um, resource consents are being relaxed for DIY, DIY, DIYs. Now why can't they be relaxed for marae too? given this situation. And it's maybe something that we should explore. Good. Question. Yes. We just spent oh, probably about 8,000 getting our fence done by the church. Could the, could we recover the cost that the Malai spent on this? No, nah, no sunk cost, I think. No sunk cost. Just say to it. But that, that, could be, that could be identified as part of the contribution. So yes. in the funding application, it says how much you want from the funder and then how much are you. So yes. I've identified what the annual grants that the trust is providing. So I've said Rungu Whakata, you know, is contributing about 250k when we total up everything the trust is. You know, that's our investment, so if Marae can say, well actually, and we put in our own bit here, then that adds to, we're putting in our pocket while we're asking others to dig out and, you know, dig out of their pocket. The other um, point is, is that when I, put, I, I filed the application and I put the placeholder based on the optimum amount of money for all of the Marae. Uh, and I've said that uh, not all of our marae were able to put their paperwork in, so we've got till Thursday. Thursday's what I was told. Because ministers are going to be meeting sort of in a couple of weeks' time, and the reason I had asked if we could do it over four tranches, like, you know, uh, get the first lot up and then roll the next one up in two weeks and four weeks and six weeks, but... Um, that haven't got all these stuff. Another shop in the new financial year. Well, it all depends. It depends on what happens in the elections. I think just the only thing, if I can add, I think the thing for the marae that that will be helpful through leveraging the relationship with ROT is all of the administration that comes with getting going. Um, putting them through a training course, an introductory, six week introductory course, and then they can specialise. Those that might want to go on and be a builder, a carpenter, they can do the pre apprenticeship training course while getting on the job experience doing marae projects. Fencing, landscaping, putting in marae, all of those things. Those are the training. So that's the second component of the application. And the third component is, which is really the COVID
specific response along with training is trying to get all the trainees that come through our, our program and we're looking at a total of about 150 in, in year one and 150 in the following year is to try and place those people into work. So we've got a heavy emphasis on training those who are currently unemployed or have been redeployed to find them other <coughs> skills to get them a job but also to build up their connection with their marae so they're the ones that are there on the weekends helping with projects. So that's what the whole three components of the Māwairae Taurima, that's the name of the uh, approach mm -hmm. is. Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll just um, speak as well. So it, it, it's also growing employment. Oh, my God. I'm in the brown. So um, I was working with Sharon and um, Amal as well as Phil just to um, sort of put um, some training, a training program in place. So, but also this opportunity is also for our people to look at long-term sustainable employment um, and how we can upskill our people as well. Um, so it's not like a six month thing, so this thing could be, um, can continue, it can go up to two years. So I just thought I'll stand up and give my bit of part time. But fine, fine. it has been a long process because um, this um, funding did come about, so a lot of us had to get, get together, knock our heads together, and um, create something to make this happen. And I think it is an awesome opportunity as well. Venture into helping, you know, even say uh, homes being helped, and then venture into the trust supporting homes being that, maintained. But, but um, there is a, there are spin offs um, in terms of this is just one form mm. of funding. Mm. The trust um, is yet to discuss the details, but certainly housing is a priority that <coughs> has been promoted by a number of trustees. So. There is an opportunity around building some houses and also doing, um, taking a leaf out of a, the Waikato Tainui. We have instigated a program around going around all their whānau homes and you know mm. doing the bathrooms up, mm. all the kitchens, mm. and re-roofing and putting in insulation. So that could be a second phase. Yeah, yeah. So that's all the things that are on the trust, you know. Um, to do lists and they just have to sit down and work out what's how to <coughs> prioritise those and then really and then that's give us our writing instructions about what we then have to do about those putting those things into action. So I'm in and then so the government giving a lot of funding to healthy home today and we all know it's quite a lot of money. I think it's fifty six mil and eight thousand new houses. Not to say 8,000 new houses are coming here, eh? Yeah. All going to be Auckland, all the migrants that are coming out of it. We're tagging 500. 500. Here we are, not yeah. anybody else, oh, just yeah. collective here. Yeah. And it'd be a good thing to get all our young people into apprenticeship, apprenticeship like, yeah, carpentry and electricity, electrician. So the challenge to get our young people on this is them staying there. That's the biggest challenge. Three years. And they don't migrate to Aussie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but just to refocus us, Whanau, this conversation started about the marae, eh? So this is a, a, an immediate window to help the marae access some funding to get the marae done up. First priority. Focus on that. These other conversations, there's somewhere down the path. Mm. So I'm saying that to you as a trustee because I want to start I start creating expectations that we may not yeah. be able to meet. Mm. Mm. But it could lead to those other Oh, it could. Things. It could. But we could uh, die of cancer tomorrow or we could get another pandemic. Yeah, yeah. yeah we play the game. So, uh, I, so think so I think the actual training's in the pipeline. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's where we're up to with the reprioritization. So we've done some uh, different components of those, but the trustees have yet to work out what the priorities are. And then the intent is to then go, hey, what do you all think? 
have we got it right? Yeah. Before we go, this is what we're doing. Just to make sure that's really clear. Interesting. Okay, <laughs> any more party on that? Otherwise, we're going to introduce Kristen to the Settlement Trust Review. Kapai. Kia ora. So, uh, so those Manai people, um, obviously tomorrow you'll be contacted to get some collective conversation occurring. Uh, so tomorrow there'll be a conversation between you and RIT. Oh, sorry, Monday. In respect of some corridor and what's happening in your space, so that we can help you. Yes. Uh, I would say that. Do we have to call a special meeting tomorrow? No, the um, other one who team will coordinate. We just that. thought we'd just get together and then have a talk about what do we need to do and then what support RIT needs to provide and then you'll say, well, we, we need to do A, B and C, which might mean we've got to contact our trustees. Kia ora. Can we just stay here? Um, I'm just around here to listen to the camera. Yeah. 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 Take the hot seat. Yeah. Oh, the hot seat. Why? Oh, kia ora, kia ora te whānau. Uh, he rawe ki te, uh, ki te o, o kānopi uh, anō. Um, yeah, so I've got this wonderful <laughs> opportunity now to provide this invigorating topic right at the end, just before lunch. I noticed that it was on the agenda just before lunch and I went, whoa. Um, but anyway, I'm just supporting the Trust at the moment in terms of overviewing the review of the Rō Whakata Settlement Trust deed. Um, so um, I hope a, a lot of information went out to, to our whānau um, earlier in May, so I hope everyone received that. But if not, um, Bex has got some copies available, Bex, for you, if um, that sort of... Because there's actually a lot of complexity in some of this. But just to go through it, and I'll try to go through this as quickly as possible, but if you've got any questions, just interrupt me. Um, the Settlement Trust um, was established in 2011 and it was basically the vehicle to receive our treaty settlement assets. So that's what it is. Um, the deed itself is the legal document, of course, that empowers and guides the Rungu Whakata Iwi Trust um, to, to actually manage um, our assets. And basically we're at the stage now where we're legally obliged to review the Rungu Whakata Settlement Trust at this time, which is why we've got to go through this process. So just to, because it's a little bit confusing because we've actually got two trustees in operation. So some of you will remember that not too long ago, in about 2017, there was quite a comprehensive review of the Rungu Whakata Iwi Trust itself. And there were surveys that were sent out, and from what I understand, there was quite a lot of participation in that. Um, and so, just to, to be clear about it, the Rongo Whakata Settlement Trust is basically the commercial arm and the Rongo Whakata Iwi Trust is the charitable arm. And um, while they're separate entities that are governed by their separate deeds, they do have the same elected trustees. So your elected trustees are the trustees for both. What that means basically is that the deeds share very similar provisions. For example, like the governance structure and all of that. The provisions that differ in the Rongo Whakata Settlement Trustee are more commercial in nature. So they're things like archiving of records and application of income and things like that. Um, otherwise, the majority of the provisions are very similar and we have in one of the information sheets a table that shows you the, the provisions in the Rongo Whakata Iwi Trustee as well as the Rongo Whakata Settlement Trustee and you'll see how similar they are. So anyway, because there was such a comprehensive sort of review in 2017 of the Rungu Whakata Iwi Trust deed, um, there were quite a lot of substantive changes that happened to that deed at that time. So for example, one of which you will all know is that the election of trustees changed. And so we now have 
not only Marae representatives, of which went from two to one, but we also have three more general um, positions available too. So that was one quite major change um, that happened as a result of whānau feedback. The provisions... Oh, so what's happened, just to save cost and time, because all of this actually has a big cost to it, what um, the Trust decided to do was rather than... Uh, was to actually update all the provisions that were very similar in the Rungawhakaara Settlement Trust deed to reflect the changes that had already been passed by you on the Rungawhakaara <coughs> Ibi Trust deed. So what we have is we have an updated deed that reflects those changes so that we don't have to re, you know, go over that again. But of course that hasn't been passed yet because at the end of this year is when you'll have the opportunity to vote by special res resolution on the changes to be made to the uh, settlement trustee review. So, um, oh yes, and last year at the at the Hui Atau, Fado were were, from what I understand, were notified that that updating had occurred, and that um, and were invited to actually make submissions on the Rongfukara settlement trustee at that time. Um, we've only received one submission so far that I know of. Have received them? Oh, cool. Ka pai. Okay. So we have two at the moment. <laughs> Ka pai. <laughs> so really, this is your opportunity to provide some feedback, um, particularly on the provisions that are more specific to the settlement trust deed, um, because as, as we've said, it was only actually the, the provisions that changed the Rungfukara Iwi trust deed have only really been in effect for two years, or just over two years. And, um, which doesn't mean that you can't have another look at that, of course you can, but um, in particular, um, focusing on the provisions specific to the um, trustee, which are the commercial ones, but also, you know, more general, general feedback, um, such as your thoughts on how well you think the trust has been managing the assets so far, the treaty assets, and um, any changes um, that you would think were needed to improve the situation. And there is quite a good summary document that was released um, with our treaty settlement assets that lists the sort of treaty settlement assets that did come back to North Carter. So that too is available from the office. Question. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> when that trust was set up firstly, going way back to the, mm. when we received our money from the trust, mm. it had put um, some trustees up. Mm. Two trustees, is it? Um, were those trustees, are those trustees there for life or not? No, they were, from what I understand, they were the initial trustees, but so any sort of deed needs to have So are they still there? Because, you know, I can remember going way back where they said that they were there for life. Well, what the actual... That's how Willie Tower did it. No. Well, no, that's, no, actu that's actually changed in 2014. Yes. In 2014, what happened was that the Rongfukara Iwi I, Trust became I, the corporate yeah, trustee. I that, but then I was under the... No, so because they've become RIT in 2014, became the Rongfukara, well, that became the corporate trustee. What that means is your elected trustees are now the trustees of this. So you're right, Edna, there was an initial, initial trustees. Those, those trustees no longer on it? No, no, they're no longer on that. They have been, so the they're trustee no forestry was amended, those trustees were removed like yeah. as part of that amendment, no. they're no longer lifetime trustees. They were just put there to hold it oh. as yeah. holders, really. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Then my next question, Yeah. <laughs> why can't it all be wrapped up into one? Well that's actually what we're seeking some, as part of the formal process, because it does need to have a lawyer look over it, so we've got Spencer Webster that's doing the overview of this. And one of the things that the trust has asked them to look at is can we actually go to one trustee? Because it is, it's this is actually a clean up job in a way because basically your trustees are technically um, consistent with the, the, you know, not in breach of one deed, but because these provisions haven't been passed yet, are technically in breach of some of the provisions in this deed, which makes no sense. So the ultimate is to actually try to bring us to one. But there were some reasons why that happened at that time, from what I understand, and some reasons why in the 
2017 review, nothing changed from that in terms of the two trustees. But that's definitely something that we want to sort of sort out. Yeah, just one of the things that could affect that is that with the charitable trust, which the RIT is, mm -hmm. you have to have a certain percentage of charitable activities. Mm -hmm. If you change that percentage of charitable activities and you involve commercial ventures, well then the commercial side of it, if that becomes more than a certain percent, then you, won't, then you lose your charitable status. So there's other things that are involved in it. It's not that easy just to incorporate the two. But there may be changes, you know? Like everything else, there's few changes. Yeah, but it doesn't change the nature of what charitable trusts are made of. And you registered with the charitable societies. And so in order to be registered with, in order to be registered with them, you have to have charitable purposes and charitable intent and charitable activities, which the, the RIT the presently owns. The Crown owns of any settlement uh, property to a charitable trust. Yeah. What, what yeah. I can say, though, is that mm. in its present form, it is working. Yeah. Um, it does need tidying up because there is provision that, um, as Tristan has already said, we have to do this review. So it's our opportunity just to streamline it. Yeah. There will be opportunity between now and November to discuss it. Oh yes, absolutely. So formal, <laughs> formal submissions though, <laughs> they were extended from the end of May, thanks to COVID, to the end of this month now. Um, sorry, it just oh yeah oh so if we just oh yeah and then we can oh if we can just go back to the timeline just for a second. And then, of course, there'll be a summary of feedback, which everybody can discuss again. Um, and then there'll be the proposed amendments that will then again be discussed and voted on. But hopefully, we, when we get to the summary of feedback and RIT's response, that's another, that's another opportunity for a conversation before we actually go to the proposed amendments in October. Um, because once it goes there, what we'd want is we don't want to actually get to a situation where, <laughs> where people aren't happy with it at all. So it's important that we are actually on the same, yeah, same level. But I think that's, that, that, you know, streamlining the process is what's really important. Hopefully we can amalgamate or whatever it is to get to that point. But if not, we are going to have to make this workable. Um, and one of the ways in doing that is to look at some of the clauses around review, so we don't have to do two separate reviews, you know, every five years or so. Um, at the moment, I think I took that out anyway with the updated <laughs> But, um, yeah, so at the end of this year is when hopefully all of this will get to be completed. Cool. Thanks, Bex. So this is how you can participate. and. Um, we have an information sheet which just talks about some of the facts, so some of, just the, some of the things or questions that you might have on it. Um, there's, a, there's a table that shows you what some of the changes are and what some of the very specific provisions of the Rungfukara Settlement Trust Deed are in each of that, so that that's highlighted. Um, you can provide written feedback and according to the deed it needs to be addressed to our, our Chair Moira and um, to be sent to, to the process. Yeah, that's part of the process. Um, but you can also say, you, you know, have your say now as well, and I'll write down all your, your comments. Mm -hmm. But yeah, any questions, any? Yes, yeah, I'm a bit confused. So the RIT trustee has been challenged, yeah. yes. so does the RST take into account our new election process. Yes, so that's, that was the updating that I, I said that had been done because what we don't want is we don't want to pay a lawyer to go and do all the things that we'd already done. So what has happened, what happened last year is that we updated that to reflect all the changes that the whānau had approved on the Rongawhakata Iwi Trustee. So the election of marae, uh, the election of trustees, all the governance provisions, all the policies and that that were included within um, the, that we changed within the Rungwhakaara Iwi Trustee are now reflected in the up, what we call the updated Rungwhakaara Settlement Trustee. And it's an updated one because none of those provisions have been passed yet. Okay, yeah. so I've got a second question. In the RIT Trustee, I don't believe there was any provision for the Iwi groups <coughs> to be held accountable, unlike the Marae group, who are supposed to go to Marae meetings once mm. a month. Mm. Is this an opportunity for us to make our Iwi groups accountable because they only come to the Iwi? That's the 
Yeah. Well, okay. first off, Carol, there is no provision in the RIT <coughs> that the marae reps have to report to marae. They're just elected by those marae. And there's an expectation on them from the people that they go and report those marae. Secondly, the EV reps do report to our people through our own networks. We don't have a specific community within. That is a deliberate decision by the iwi, because we're meant to be representing the entire iwi. Um, and it's quite difficult to put an expectation to us iwi reps to go and suddenly talk to everyone at once. All we can do is the best we can. Is that expectation is not being put on us in such a way uh, because it's impractical and unachievable. Realistically. Well, and thank you, Adam, for answering for us. Just um, my family raised this question in the Marae um, Hui about, well, actually, Marsha, who are you accountable to? Hey. So um, thank you, Carol, for raising that uh, discussion point, and Kristen can answer it. But the notion of accountability <laughs> and how we're made accountable, and it's just said our Marae trustees aren't technically. So, I mean, that is a, a conversation piece for us to have with ourselves, I think. I'd just like to add to that, um, in, terms of, in terms of accountability, I think it was um, at our second or third meeting that we had as, as new trustees, as a, as a new trust of um, the current trustees of RIT, each of the trustees had to actually sign a um, code of conduct, and that code of conduct outlines all of the things that we have to do to make us responsible for our iwi. Now that code of conduct, we had a lawyer come along witness our signatures and we had to provide um, information that, that pertaining to our identity so it was all very official. So we are locked into that legally as well as, um, as, well as by, by virtue of the fact that we represent our people. So all of that is actually covered and you can get a copy of that I'm sure. Okay then, is this also an opportunity for the Marae to say, we, you have an obligation, not an expectation. Is this an opportunity for us to say, because that expectation, they, you know, we've had bad trustees in the past and we haven't been able to kick them out. Mm -hmm. Because there's an expectation, not an obligation, mm -hmm. to attend at least four meetings per year, if not every month. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's two things in that. Firstly, in answer to your question, of course this is an opportunity to put forward whatever you want to in terms of the submissions toward this thing. This is the opportunity to do that. Um, you, like, like um, as part of the process, there will be written feed, feedback on that and, and the trust's response to that. Um, on the other hand, in terms of the balance, it's like what Tiatu said. Um, there are a whole lot more accountabilities that have been brought into um, from uh, into the trustees um, from the last time we did the review, such as code of conduct now that they have to um, sign. And what we have now is like, I remember coming back to, and you'll know that because you were at all those pleas too beforehand, we hardly had any of the trustees here. Mm. Now we have the trustees, most of the trustees, all of the trustees that are elected here today, and to me that is being really accountable because this is your opportunity, and I've heard some really um, cool courted all here, challenging our trustees and what they're doing here as well. So I think that there's a whole lot more that I've seen that's happened, and even policies and processes that have been developed since then. So it's about that balance. How much do we want to actually regulate this, like the parking does, versus how much do we want to actually keep it sort of, you know, open to that. But again, in answer to your question, yes, this is your opportunity. Put forward a submission if you want me to, to note that now about some, yeah, some, so, so we'll look at that, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and I think, Auntie, if I can just add, you know, when we went through the Law for Carter Ewe Trust Feed Review, almost like 60% of all of the feedback were non deed changes. Yeah. So, um, even if it's, you know, I think that was the really interesting thing that came through in the deed review is that it didn't make mm. sense to make that a deed requirement. It made sense to create this kind of policy or whatever that requires these types of changes because this is what we don't, you know, this is, this is essentially what our people said, you're not doing this right, um, you're not getting this right. And then so rather than make that prescriptive in the deed, which becomes dated instantly, yeah. it became like we front footed the way rather than focus on getting rid of trustees, it was making sure up front you have the right 
skill set and the right level of commitment. So I think those are this <coughs> is the same opportunity to put all those taki back on the table. What is working, what isn't working, because otherwise it just will, you know, you don't, I don't think we need to wait for a deep review to make some of those changes, yeah. is all I'm saying. Yeah. I think, yeah, no, yeah. I, sorry, sorry. I, think, um, I see a, a very inconsistent view as to uh, what the trustees are and who they represent. And uh, my understanding is there's a, a, a much uh, bigger power and could that be in this 1956 uh, trustees are, and it's a very complicated thing, and they're currently reviewing it at this mm. point in time, but all trusts are subject to that. And, um, you know, uh, it's very easy. The way I see it is, is that, you know, through the Marais, that's the pathway to becoming a trustee. Mm. However, that trustee is not your representative. Mm. That trustee might have moral obligations of coming back to the Marais and um, explaining a taki or what mahi the, um, the trust has been working on, but actually, every one of the trustees, they represent all of us, the whole of us. It's inconsistent with trust law to think otherwise. And so I think we need to come onto the same page as to um, what it is when you come through your marae, you're actually the representative, you're actually, that's the pathway to getting, becoming a trustee. Um, but once there, every trustee is prepared to represent every one of the beneficiaries equally in the main and partial sense. So are the um, RIT trustees the same as they also do the RST? Yeah. Sort of contradicts a bit of a thing that you had up before. Which was? So was Managing that? and performing our assets to the best of their ability. Mm. So they're asking themselves, are we doing a good job? Mm -hmm. That's the way that that trustee was set up though, that's the confusion. Yeah, so it's a, corporate, it's a corporate trustee. In 2014 mm -hmm. what happened was that the trust the initial two trustees were replaced by a corporate trustee which is RIT so that's how it differs but your trustees are basically the same so it's one of those technical I know this whole thing is technical it's quite yeah it can, it can well, be quite so the, uh, <coughs> Trust and yes. was actually set up to receive the government money mm -hmm. To, exactly. to receive the treaty settlement assets. It was a post-governance settlement vehicle. <coughs> um, I would note though, even though it was set up for that reason, Irina, different people had different ideas about how it would work. And that ended up with the kind of the confusion we've got with RST, RIT. Um, I know for a fact certain members of the community were saying, we should run like NITO and have a commercial arm and a um, distribution arm. And it kind of got structured that way, and then somebody would be like, no, we just want to hold the assets and RIT then control it. So it ended up being a mess, which is why it got kind of fixed up in 2014. And now we're going with the structure basically of RIT is the government's control, yeah. RST is just hold, asset kind of holder and makes money, passes on and on. But we've looked so, at that. Uh, so, can I just, uh, to provide some clarity, so um, Erin is right, and I just speak to the RST and only had three trustees. But what happened was the Rumafgari Trust had an election process in which you elected two trustees from each one eye. And so we had 10 elected trustees making decisions about all our assets that were being overruled by RST that had three trustees. And we were coming to meetings and having battles between ourselves. So hence the reason why we actually asked David um, uh, to review that process. So as a governance body, we weren't sitting arguing between ourselves in respect of the settlement trusts and the Iwi trusts. So that was the reason why we went to the consultation process in 2014 and set up this structure. I think uh, we had to set up the settlement trusts no. to receive the assets from the treaty. Just one thing, um, that settlement trust was put there to receive the settlement claims. Yeah, that, that, that's so, true. if um, one of the things I'm not quite sure the Tahoki Tūranga issue is settled, is that part still part of the. Well, that's why it still has to stay. Mm -hmm. at, at, at uh, what I'm trying to say is, in how you want to amalgamate, what happens if we still got claims coming up? Well, what we, we're going to be actually, what the trust has asked for is advice about whether it is actually possible mm -hmm. and able to, you know, like make sense to bring them together. If not, they will remain separate. Mm -hmm. But what we'll do is, is ensure that they're absolutely, you know, similar 
and that you know we need to think about think more about the review provision because we had no choice we had to see yeah. yes and for some of the reasons that actually for the for the reasons from what i understand what te Atu was saying it was the charitable status that would have been affected as well mm. so um yeah so that's right that's why it was set up but we just have this funny little process at the moment yeah. that we're going through which we got rct so. had the charitable status yeah. yes it was rct was it yes and then it became yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All these acronyms. Yeah. Just take you back through the street. Come on. So I've noted your thank you. Yeah. Any Who's the trustee from the RSC? They're the same ones that are the they used to have to Yeah. So, yes, yes, so it, is, it is very confusing. I wonder if what we could do <laughs> is um, maybe a, a, if we could get out of this um, for, to, to give some uh, more visibility of what the structure is, if we could do a visual of what the corporate trustee looks like mm. for Rongo Whakata Iwi Trust in relation to Rongo Whakata Settlement Trust and then in the group. Yeah. Overall, yeah. I think yeah. that might be a, a useful tool because mm. yeah. we're all used to having commercial arm, social arm. This is integrating those two types of entities through a different, te through a technical piece of <laughs> deed. Yeah. It's sort of like, uh, as you put that, it's sort of like the corporate trustee is like the bubble that's got all your trustees in it. <laughs> <laughs> Like that. <laughs> I think well, the purpose of it is that it, it's actually um, it's telling our story of how we've evolved, mm. how we're moving, how we're tracking, with the view that we're going to change again, eh? Mm -hmm. What we feel what we want, what our needs are, uh, how we make ourselves accountable, how much <coughs> we trust what our organisation is doing for us and we can see it. So I just think there's. Um, it's going to continue to change, but as long as we all know why and how. Because they're all our assets and land, this is in another trust. No, no, it's RST. It's RST. So, yeah. uh, and the other reality of this is that the whole settlement process was very much dictated by the Crown as to what it would look like. But as we have matured as an entity, we've pushed back and said, well, actually, it doesn't work for us in yeah. that process or this process. Mm. So. <coughs> Actually, a part of the reason why the um, the trustees of the settlement trust and RIT are the same is because the trustees are representative of the people. They have been put in place by the people. Now, if you had a different set of people in charge of the um, settlement trust that the RIT had no control over, that would put RIT into a very... Um, very risky situation and that risky situation would be passed down to our to our people too and by that I mean to say that in having the trustees responsible for both they're only separated because of the charitable and the commercial um, natures of the two entities so having having the, the same trustees um, in charge of both makes a lot of sense and you shouldn't forget also that the RIT, because they're represented of the people and, and elected by the people, are the parent body of all of the entities that go with RIT, because we are the ones that are responsible back to our union. Can I ask a question? How much is wrong with the worth in money? Ah, oh, the, the current value is about, yeah, 44? 44. 44 million is our asset base. How much? 44 million. What do we start with? 32. 32. Yeah. 42 we start with that. No, 32. 32. Okay. Kapai? Kamote, do you like Kuruno? Kiyonos. How was the RST accountable to the father then? Through these uh, eight people that you've elected. Through RIT, uncle. Shouldn't they? You should have to take it with you by the end of this week. 
We're, we're both the same. We're both the same. The RIT trustees are the RST trustees. In fact, when we have our meetings, and it's a hoo-ha, we, we stop the Room of Guard Every Trust meeting and start a Room of Guard a Settlement Trust meeting. Okay, so I'm not getting confused. Can you RST members stand up? I know who they are. Yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna be here. I think yeah, I think we need to do yeah. like a visual to yeah. help understand the group arrangement. Yeah. I suppose communication. Hey, mm. yeah. Carol, Carol, Carol's yes. yeah. And I guess that's why. Ricky yeah. boy saying what he's saying because yeah. he, he's not getting communicated to. Yeah. We've been saying that for a long time. Well, oh, hey, and we're calling yeah. that same predicament. Yeah, so we need a visual, which is oh, well, what I'm going to have a, some, I'm going to have something. It says that, because I don't like reading these that long documents, <laughs> so I have to read the RST settlement um, there. But to me, that was just to receive the settlement plan. Mm -hmm. yes. It had nothing to do with the commercial arm of our mm -hmm. uh, of our charter. Yeah. That's how I saw it when it was set up. Mm -hmm. It was to receive the commercial, I mean the, the settlement claim, and then the RIT was to decide what happens mm -hmm. to those assets. Because in a way, we've got a commercial arm, the asset holding company, mm -hmm. even though it was for fish. That was your job to RIT to um, reconstruct, or you know, review our structure and to say, RSD, the assets will go here, or will come, it will come to us. That's how I saw it. Some people like that. So I can understand the key's problem seeing you all as a trustee of this um, RSD. You know, I didn't read the deed. I am, I'm, we didn't just get cash though. To, to me, that's all it was when it was set up. It was to receive our assets. Mm. And, and it's still the same. Our idea <laughs> makes a decision where it goes. Whether it goes into the, if we um, rest, restructure the asset holding company, it goes there. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, but that's, and now you're saying it has the same power. No, we're saying it has the same governance. Yeah. Yeah. But to me, I didn't see it as a commercial arm. No, and the commercial arm for, for a room of cardio we trust is the room of uh, group holdings. So when the government gave us the money, they also gave us land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know that. It's, a, it's part of the settlement plan, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But it should have been RIT make the decision where that goes. Yes. But they decided to leave yeah. it there, yeah. and it became, I know it's a simple explanation, commercial arm and charitable arm. But, yeah, I don't know. So let, get, let me give you a scenario. So, no, uh, Rom, you don't have to. Rom, Gata, Rom, Rom, Gata, settlement I'm Trust either. received the sections in Beryl Street under the settlement. They then transferred the ownership of those to the two Dunga Group Holdings who are the commercial arm. But the initial owner is still the settlement trust. Yeah, I understand two Dunga Group Holdings is... Um, it holds uh, land that we can't decide who owns, Mahaki or no, no. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what it was. It was initially, but it's not in here. Is that also the police station? No. no. Uh, yes, the police station initially was given to Two Dango Group Holdings. They tried to sell it, so we took it back to us under the Settlement Trust. So it actually it's a belongs... police station on Bill Street. What about the of London Street? Oh, they can't. Yeah, that's two younger group holders. I all my like one of the the trustees are also been a confusion was really getting that two younger group holders seem to have had a lot of say over the years. Yeah, did. And that's where I thought it was RST. But my apologies now that I'm gonna think you're on the Alright, I think now I know. Come on. Okay, so we'll provide a bit of a visual so mm. that gives you clarity. But the governance for both trusts is the eight people that you've elected. Okay, general business. So, <coughs> Nina. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, so let's talk about the Endeavour replicas. So they're actually not replicas anymore. The, the originals were actually replicas, but the current models are models because they're made about a million, so they're not the same as the original boat. Um, and, and just to provide some clarity, the council meeting occurred uh, last Thursday in which they uh, supported in the boat process 10 to 3 to put the replicas back where they came from, all the models, back where they came from, uh, without any consultation or any conversation. And that was led by the fact that they, it was part of their council meeting and that they had to make a decision. Uh, and if you're uh, familiar with social media, there's all sorts of responses, but yeah. And, and Mr. Madam Chair, this council was acting on an obligation made by the previous council, led by, chaired by Mingau Race Relations Consolidator. Ming Fu was part of the original decision makers who agreed to put those, those endeavours back in town. So this council is basically resolving or made, decided to implement that decision. Uh, and the only three people who voted against that initial decision was Josh, um, Meredith and Tony Robinson. Um, obviously the, uh, it was a holiday weekend, there was a whole lot of conversations happening and there was a meeting that was initiated uh, through the chair of Toy 2, so myself, uh, Penny and Selwyn with an apology from Pauline to the Mayor to say, and of which she said this is the decision that was made in Council and I am going to my councillors to rescind that decision after she'd heard our conversation, which was basically uh, the consultation process. We also made her aware that there were actually people who were anti the whole models and replicas, uh, and there's that response as well. Uh, so you would see the media response that they've said they will come and consult. So the challenge to us is how do we want that consult consultation to look like? How do you want it to happen? Do we just call a hui and have the corridor? Or because we've submitted and said you need to come and talk to us as manafina. Yeah. Oh, so what, what, what did you actually say at your meeting to the council mm -hmm. to make her change her mind? Yeah. Uh, so I said Rungafagari, which trust is very disappointed in the council decision and disappointed in fact that you didn't consult and extremely disappointed that after all the corridor from two year two fifty that this is a council response. That's the last one. Um, can I ask about the tree in the domain? What's happened to that? Can we go back to our <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can we deal with the replicas and then I'll deal with the tree? Yeah, I don't have a problem with whatever they want to put up for cook as long as our are acknowledged So that was the other stance that we've, we've basically, which has been led through Amal, is that we have uh, the Ruapani and the Pawan Kiwa uh, Hawaii Tūranga that actually we've been trying to put up for some time. So get the priorities and respect the sequence of who came first. Mm -hmm. sort of yes. Yes. I do have a problem actually. I do have a problem. And my problem is this. They say that they're going to rescind, but when you see all the different comments that have been made by those, some of those councillors, it is a bit of lip service. It's not genuine enough for me, because for me, I still read into what they're saying, that those replicas will go back up, because they paid the money. For me, I don't care about the money. You know, the thing is, they're going against what we stood up for for two years, 250. We kept the boat out. We never allowed the boat to come in. Okay? You know, we've got to stand up. We can't be playing two, two. You know, they killed our tipuna. They killed it. Why should we have to continue to live with that if we see that endeavour up in our street? every day of our lives and our and the future of all we'll see it. 
So, so your stance is we shouldn't even have them. Is that what you're no. saying? Oh. That, that defeats what we stood up for in Julia. So the question that, that I propose to us as Rongvakata is actually what does our consultation process look like? Why don't we just invite the councillors to one of our marae to come and talk to us? Thank you. Yeah. You won't have it with that? Yeah. Why don't we have the councillors come and eyeball us and talk to us about the replicas that they want to put up on our whenua? Gee, this is very funny, man. It's, it's, it's quite uh, frightening to be to be hearing all this kōrero because ehara na 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 tātou te hara. And uh, I think that hara needs to be in a story form. And I don't even know what recent means. Uh, Overturned. 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 Overturned and rediscuss, I guess, and, and recollect thoughts. I, and revisit the, the issue that's in hand, and I think that um, you know, they did tika kuyati mo. Rongo pakata need to understand what we do, and I think Auntie Eden is right, Auntie Auntie Romeo is right, and all our pakeke is right. It's going to be a visual that you can't get out of your head. However, I I was thinking about because I've been reading, and I think that education is the key. It's educating every visitors. Every manuhiri, every people in Tūrana, what they break because of the belt. And that's the true story. We saw it. We saw it last year. It was huge. All I'm saying is, Auntie Moy, if it goes back to where it is, then I think more education, more stories about our tipuna that are acknowledged, <laughs> those, those young boys, uh, all sorts, all sorts, taking of land, the guns, all that, all that story, I think, needs to be told. That's the cost of civilization. Now what's the story behind it? That's what I'm saying is education. If if the the, 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 the voting is ten to nine, then um, I think that uh, we've got a good opportunity again to tell our story. No, I take it. Queen. Do you want to So the challenge we throw to the council is we'll facilitate a marae and you come and have a corridor with us. But I think we've still got the opportunity here to voice our opinion because we've gathered as a we are here to say whether or not we want those things up or down. <laughs> so you know the community, we made us <laughs> You're good, all right. <laughs> we made up 50% of our people here. And uh, yeah, that's represented inside of the community, but there are other, other obligations, eh? according to Te Tsitsi or Waitangi, and that also needs to come in over the top of it. And so it's about us presenting ourselves and saying, here's the numbers, yeah, here's 50% saying no, mm. but also here is the key element to it all here, and this is our stance together. So it's important that we, um, uh, I think, we consult within ourselves correctly mm. so that we present a solid case. When we, when we actually stand, more of you stand and you speak to them, that the whole lot of us are behind you, right? the full weight, and they can actually yeah. see the representation that you're standing on behalf of. So um, that's key on. Just in terms of the consultation, I mean, I've been hearing, you know, what Mitty was saying too right at the beginning um, about actually, here's a real issue with these district council, and I know that you're working on that relationship and everything. But consultation to me is not not enough. I agree that we need to be actually making some real strong, you know, so that so that like what Sam was saying, you can stand up and say without a doubt, well actually no, don't put those endeavour things up at all. Not until we have yeah, and revisit that ever, maybe. But the fact is is that it is about our stories and, and the education is a very important part of that. And um, I do think it's a complete contradiction of what just happened in Tuya if these things go up. So that's the council making another decision that compromises us as an as an iwi and the stories we want to tell. And it's not, I think, saying I don't know, I mean every time I see the, the, the statue of Captain Cook, you know, that's what he meant for so long and everything else, it's sort of that's the same sort of thing I guess. Um, yeah. So anyway, Kia ora. I completely okay. agree with okay. your priority. So it'd be useful, as, as George has already said, that we, we're here sitting in this forum. It would be useful for those who are present. How for No. No. <laughs> no. Three no's. No. Four no's. No. No. no to what? No to in, in 
anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Uh, I think I think there is provision to put them somewhere. And I've said this before, and that's our the Museum of Transport and Technology. Right? Well, <laughs> <that's laughs> So I'm well, bearing in mind that there are other uh, iwi and hapu who've had a better relationship with the endeavour, so we can have that quarter. Oh, well, I thought, well, well, my, my submission is that don't put them up where they want to put them up. Oh, kia ora. Yes. So, so not on the main street. Like a good option. Yeah. Put them up Monroe Street. <laughs> well, put them on the Street. <laughs> 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 ah, so I think the consensus of in the main street of Gladstone Road is a big no, no, no. Put that to the vote. Well, well it, I'm sorry, but it's not just the main street though, yeah. right? Is it, is it more actually anywhere on Rumble for Carter Land? <laughs> yeah, on the old what? On the old dump. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's our land. Constructive suggestion. I think that Moya raised, Moira raised a very good point when she said that other iwi had better experiences with the Endeavour and the crew than we did. And maybe that should be teased out a little bit more. Well, I don't think so. For me, I don't think it's a wider consultation. I think we need it. I'm not, saying that, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do what we're doing now. All no. I'm saying is that um, what Moira said is exactly right. Yes. Other iwi did have better um, experiences, and maybe the opportunity should be given to them to put them there. The uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, as yeah. uh, Taha's already said, it's not our right? actions. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, I get the sense that no on Ronga Whakata land or no on Gladstone Road. No. No. And if they are going to put them anywhere at all, you know, that's not. Because I think it is really important that our story or whatever is associated yeah, our, with our Yeah, our corridor is if it's hosted in the museum or whatever it is that where they put them in the end, but not you know okay. called the Carter Land. Yeah. Alrighty. Oh, thanks. Well, That's a good step. Um okay, so the domain. Media. Do you wanna talk through that process or do you want me to talk about what we know? Mum. Minute. Uh, okay. Read the tree. Oh, yeah, I just want to know what, what happened to the tree in the domain. Did what? it go back to our uh, room of cut trust? What's that? There was a tree that was laid down in the Red fern tree came out in the domain. Red fern. And they claimed it as GDC. Yeah. They gave all the other wood for the community for fire, for your fires. But they kept a specific tree because it's good for timber, you know, for um, furniture, oh, furniture and carvings. It's all right. No, it's not. No, it's all right. Those kind of things won't really happen. No, it has happened. No, but it won't. It did. It, it did happen. happen. It did happen. Yeah, it did happen, but nothing's going to happen now. Well, the only reason why it's it still lying problem. in the domain. Yes, that's. Oh. So lying in the domain, hey, and if you want to use it, why don't you look at making a, a nice conference table for the trucks? Hey, and some to yeah, and do other things. So, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware or not, because some of us participate in that, but Manatuki has a community consultation group that the GDC meet with normally at the fire station. Yeah, no, because that was the person that told me was Jody's next door neighbour, they referred her. I said to her, I've lived in Manatee all my life, but I've never heard of her. Uh, and those are the people that asked for that tree to put up some, use the timber for signs. Well, that's what GDC told me. Yeah, no, that's... They have to come back and, and talk about it. Well, no one's come back. Well, the GDC had approached, come back to the Trust and said, if you want it, you can have it. So the process is there is already a group in the village that has, you know, been working on monkey for the village. So really the conversation is between the trust and that group of people that Moira has talked about. Mm. What is the best use of that resource? But the main thing is the council 
basically said to the trust, if, you know, if you, if you want it, if you know all the group in, in Manatiki that want it, well, we have to put it together. Yeah, I'm not, but my point was consultation. Yeah. That's how it was. Yeah. Consultation with our trust. They didn't consult our trust. Yes, and we did challenge DC, so they did come back to us, so thank you. But yes, that, that's the Manatuki Community Consultation Group. So that's where that is, okay? So where, where is it all at now? It's lying in the domain of the Trust. Yeah, it's the discussion between the Trust and that consultation group that Moira has spoken about, just to say, what's the best use of that tree? And to then... Um, you know, formalise the communications with the GDC to say, you know, when these things happen, you must come and talk to us. Uh, and, okay, go by. <coughs> so we've got uh, a series of questions through the live stream process that will just respond back to you in the chat line, but um, in respect of the apology from Tana, uh, he actually confirms consultation is not enough, it's about <coughs> mana and how do we exercise our own mana. Uh, and there is some um, other, yes, sorry, so uh, from Takuri, yes, they have been down Munro Street. Uh, there's some kōrero from Bobby about um, the marae's distribution and if we're not talking to each other. There's uh, several that have said well done to us for that work. Uh, and Aunt Kathy says, yes, some of the Rungafkata Fana who lived in town, we had to contact Ngātipurau to get them to deliver some parcels. And Tracy Tanghari just wanted to know what the mara what the fun was called. Okay. <laughs> So just a, a part of it about whether um, us as Rungu Whakata will be acknowledging that um, honore, honore. So, sorry, where is, where, is he, where is it going or are we just, is he doing presenting locally or does he have to go to the government house? Yeah, so sorry, I, I took it that because it's a tar that actually he would be offered the opportunity to go to Marae yeah. and I, I would, I'm, there's some assumptions here that he would pick Whangara but, but we're happy to host him and draw the guard if that's what he wants to do and we would support that decision. But do, are you saying that we should just do our own? No, there's two processes. One is that uh, he will, you know, I'm not sure whether in COVID the government general that will give them the option of which has been given to others that she will come to a marae or a place that they determine. Yeah, I'm just not sure whether that same technology will exist in COVID. If it does, then that is a determination that Derek has got to make. And I think if we just said, you as the chair said, Derek, if you're given the opportunity, Rungu Whakata put up their hand to say, we would love to host that. Yeah, or pay I am. But, but, but at least we've said, we'd, be, we'd love to host it, that event. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, if he chooses, and if he's forced to go down to Wellington to have his um, night of conferred down there, then we can say, we'd love to host uh, um, an evening or a lunch. So it's two things, we're just sending the tunnel to put up our hands to host the actual formal confirmation of his knighthood, and the second one is to just post our own Come on. Come on. Yep. Right.
Kom maar tegen. Oh, ik kreeg van. I read on the Facebook that um, the COVID-19 we're purchasing 10 monitors. 20. 20? Yeah, no, 20. I, I got it wrong, you know, no, I undersold us. It was 20, not 10. Oh, 20. Or 20. Where are they going? Uh, to people's houses. So. Um, to, to people's houses who need to have their blood pressure monitored. So as opposed to them having to go into the hospital all the time, they just put them and train them. Whoever the, who there are people. So the 4E will benefit equally? No, so what happened is that we were opposed by the government by asking them to take the blood and so the ECDS, so we gave the money to hold and they have got their their patients who are those monitors. We never got to choose the patients who they were going to go on to the next level. Okay, so the patients that we were going to go to the next level, we knew they were mighty whanau who needed those monitors in the district. Uh, so, uh, Tiata just wants some clarity. So, did we? Can I, can I confirm that we voted no to the replicas on Rongo or no to the replicas on Gladstone Road? Okay, so we're going to vote no. So, so we confirm that we want the sequence to be that our, our Ruapani our Tūranga Hawaii Tūranga to be up first. Put the boss there. Put the boss there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and no to the replicas on Rong of Carolina, or no to the replicas on the main street. Oh, it's just the same thing. No, 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 it's just no, that is not, no constructive, those were constructive options being put forward. <laughs> that was just someone being smart. Come on. It's already down with the beach. So it's just no to the replica endeavours being installed on all the parts of Whenua. Come on. Everyone happy with that? So we're saying no to the replicas being on Rung of Whenua. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Uh, and we're saying get the sequence right. And we're saying put the Hawaii Tūranga up before you do anything. If you're going to put those replicas up and not on more than part of land, put the Hawaii Tūranga up first. And the acknowledgement of our tikuna that were killed in terms of the replica endeavours and its memorial. That yeah, and our yes. But, but in the similar group time, we also say you might want to work with those of us who are um, positive experience with the endeavour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, guy, aye. Okay. okay. Come on, Jenny. Oh, no. I know this is going to be a dumbass question, folks, so you have to arrive on mine. I know that the, the Iwi Trust, they're, they're elected and they, when they speak, they speak on behalf of all of the Kata. The Marae people are nominated and when they speak on behalf of the Marae, we know that they're speaking for the variety. Who speaks as our haku spokespersons? When someone stands up and talks, say, on Ruapani, or the Ruapani spokesperson, or the Kaipoho, or the Tūrehe, or Kaikirehe, yeah. who are we listening to? I need to know who the right voice is I, can listen, I need to listen to. Yeah, that's, that's a really interesting that. one. That's a gap. Mm. So the, the role and the māngai for hapū is something that's becoming very obvious in our settings in terms of, you know, we've shifted from the marae model, we've got this gap between the marae and the iwi, and then, if we're being honest, marae only have jurisdiction to the fence lines of their properties. Yes. Not, they don't um, actually necessarily have the mandate of the hapū. So I think it's... Um, it's a really interesting kaupapa that's continued to rear its head in my experience in the past 18 months, in particular in relation to all of the taiao kaupapa that keep coming up. I don't expect to speak to this, I mean like, in some ways it's not RIT's, I don't want to say job, but we, we don't do that, we don't set a who we say it's a hapu, it's really going to be that hapu or that entity to choose who should we represent them in the first place. 
Uh, we can facilitate that at Mature and help, but we can't. Yeah. But who is the hub? Who is the spokesperson there? So the Ongo Whakata Iwi Trust is built on the three hapu, Maru, Tafari, Kaipoho. Then we've got the five marae, and then we've got eight trustees. So I think all, all, I just think there's a gap. We don't know who the right person is, and it will depend on the kaupapa and how that person's identified. <coughs> so I, there, I don't think there's anyone at this table that can, so I wouldn't stand up and say I'm the kaipoho, mangai or rep just because I'm from Manutuki Marae. I have been on particular kaupapa when they've caught a hapu hui, but only for a kaupapa. There's just been different occasions and I've wondered who's voicing my, do I need to listen to? Well, it's a challenge for us, auntie. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question, auntie. What was that? I can't hear. Ah, oh, wait, to call it all to uh, in a hapu or rongapakata. Who, who's the spokesperson for the hapu of Rungapakata? Well, you know, sometimes well, the speaker, me. certain speakers will say their hapu. And, you know, you, you can tell by who that person is, whether they are, because they know what they're talking about. But there are some that don't know what they're talking about. Hmm. Good answer, And there's a lot of us that don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> 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 Kia ora, For me, being down to a lucky road, okay. being yeah. an auntie maru, yeah. if there's anyone that can talk, will be that guy over there. Right. Uh -huh, am I wrong, mm. uh -huh, I'm going to point you. Mm. But probably for all these one cheek here, hey, Ngāti Kaipoho, hey, well, it could be a Nikki, but I'm sure. Oh. Hey, well, <laughs> well, I'm going to go, get there, hey. Oh, but you're right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, I hey, you that's all the hard work you want to have and I know my father always was taught when it came to the hapu. It was never, hey, the E, it was always, yeah, hey, yeah. hapu first. Yeah. Nati maru, hey. Yeah. You were funny, over the, the river. Why did you ask? Kia ora, Kia ora, Kia ora, Kia ora, I think we all need to understand hapu kōrero and corporate kōrero, te dedicate. Aye, aye. Dedicate at once. Aye, te ga. So, kāne tāe, kāne tāe te te kai kore o te hapu me kore mo te kamupene. Wai mō mā te kamupene, te kamupene te kore. Wai mō mā te hapu, te hapu te kore. Ko mō heo, thank you Stacey, because I can talk for three hapu. If I want to. Because I can fuck up up to those three hapu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chop up. Okay. And you're right, it's hapu first. Because we come with those three systems. Sorry. And uh, I'm just saying, don't be confused of hapu koro and kamu peni koro. Mm -hmm. Kare, kare he ohite. Ko te hapu koro, te hapu to. Mai te rangi ki te whenua, kaputa ko te kiwa, kaputa ko pao, kaputa ko rongo whakara, kaputa ko tapa. Koe nga te koro hapu. Nā ngā papa, nā ngā kuia, nā ngā koreo e tonu e nā koreo. Te rere ki e nā kui e koreo, koreo e koreo, ki ngā koreo o ngā trusty. Rere ki e nā wātū. That's why we need to be careful. Aunty, nā mihia te nā kiapoi, aunty. Tika tonu, mā wai te hapu e koreo. Because it becomes more iwi driven, which is fine, because I see this. If our marais are fine, our hapu is fine. If our hapu is all good, our iwi is good. But we need to come down to fundamentals, I guess, down to group grassroots. When they have pay for to party tea, they pay a lot to party tea at Kita here. And then you can't pay for party tea, go away, go away. Go away, go away. You know, look after yourself, look after your own backyard before you can actually shoot. We don't know him. But all I'm saying is be careful, go away, 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 go all I'm saying is that cop, cop, corporate, corporate, uh, sorry, I'm from Wellington, I can't be <laughs> <laughs> all that corporate stuff. Because I'm staunch to who I am in Wellington. Or on the Kata Hoki, Kiki, Poniki. 
。お決まりを決めて帰るお待ちまりは。ね、お待ちまりは必要だ。マチバルバハー、お前タブリアハー、お前バカニハー、お前タイコア。そう、カプタハギチュラン、フォローフカタ。キュラクエ。あ、フィッテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクテクえい、おい、カチケナポリ、ワイホマンアパ。おい、そう、プレイヤーのキョロモンアリエ。キョロ、そうね。ああ、いや、just like to、uh, add on to the list、um,、アプポリゴ。アプ、アプは、what the park are removed、uh, and that they divided us all up and placed all the land into individual ownership。and that's how、um, they undid us the one picked us all and they actually gained the chain of ownership of the land。That's what they did. But Hapu, it's impossible to get rid of. Rather, they dealt with the lands that they belong to.、Mm-hmm. I've heard of 28 Hapu belonging to Ron,、uh, as a r o n p a k a r t a s representative of 28 Hapu. Only three around today.、Mm-hmm. And the c o r d e r o r s is that they have been、uh, <coughs> absorbed by the, the other. I've never heard anything further from the truth. There are bits of lands out there that belong to those Hapu. They're still in existence. Who are the representatives of those hapu? That's the whānau to say. It's whānau that make up hapu. That's why, yeah, I belong to Ngāti Maru, I belong to all of these hapu, every one of them, but I don't belong to every one of those pieces of land out there. Why? Because there's 28 hapu, or supposedly. I can't confirm that figure, I've heard that figure. And so there are big conversations that need to take place. And it's an education, it's a journey of learning、eh? and knowledge. Every one of them is still alive if we wish them to be. And this is why I see us as we're not quite, we're not quite striking it right, we run into lots of issues. It's because we keep, keep, keep kicking ourselves. The consultation that should be taking place, it's not taking place. We're actually doing what the council are doing to ourselves. So, we need to all come together and actually learn actually who we are, because that's actually, you're touching on、uh, actually the answer to who we are. It's not for anyone to say who the, rep- who the、um, spokesperson for these hapu are, other than the f a r n o s that belong to those hapu. So, kia ora, f a r n o s And on that note, can you finish our hui? Samuel? Wait a minute. And aren't we having a discussion about Taho? About Te Papa? I thought that was on the agenda. Yeah. Oh no. The Rio. Well, we can. About the opening. Because Taho's here. Yeah. We can still brief over the unlikely situation. Yeah. 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 No, we're not. Oh, okay. It's, I mean, it's all changed, but you can. So, well, do you just, have your call? Okay, so what happened is that we were approached. By to Papa to advise that they thought that the, well, in level two, four and three, to Papa was closed to the public. It's only reopened last Thursday or two Thursdays ago, and Taha led that.、Um, so, what we were then asked is would r o n g f a k a t a reopen the k o r o n g f a k a t a exhibition and to Hoki Tūranga?、Um, And we said we'd consider opening them when they reopened to Papa. But they came to us with some things that said under level two, you have to do A, B, and C. And so they sent us all their recommendations about how we could reorganise our exhibition space and how we could reorganise people going through, through to home. So we got that documentation. Then Arapata contacted me and said, look, <coughs> The mana whenua iwi, Ngāti Tua、um, and、um, Te Ati Awa, they're not opening any of their marae until, they've got, until the country goes to level one. They're not going to open r o n g o m a n a i Roa, they're not opening any of this. So I feel at that stage, well, actually, we should follow suit. 
you know, it would be kei te hea mātou, te huakana te tātou tā tā mō tō tātou te whare, um, and the other, the mana whenua <laughs> iwi, haven't opened their doors. So we then said, well, we'll hold off with reopening our exhibition and uh, te hauki tūranga till the mana whenua iwi open their doors to their whare. <coughs> so that's why we didn't need to consult, because we've just gone to um, wait until that time. And if we wait till level one, then we don't have to reorganise our exhibition space at all. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia So, so before, I, before I finish these um, um, Just one more, more. takeaway lunches that you can take away. I like to think that um, the trust would before before September would we'll, we'll take more carta to have a look at the tolls that was brought back from England. We have not seen those as wrong of a cut. And I would hope to think that we will see them before they return to England. That's my big topic. Come on. Yeah, well, we actually had a warning and schedule during lockdown. But you know, uh, while we're on those, um, what, what's it called? The exhibition? So there actually is a bit of difficulty then getting back in October, so they might be here longer. Sorry, it's more Funny, that's to add, add on with um, what Amo has said. I think um, for Amo for Carta now is, is, is to decide and, and discuss what that reopening may look like. Uh, because level one could be as soon as Thursday coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So level one could be Thursday coming. <coughs> so for Rome for Carter, uh, is what that reopening looks like for Mana Fenu. And that includes uh, Ikenui, that includes Odere, that includes Mako Tukutuku, that includes Tapiti uh, and also includes Rome Marae. So I suppose that's a discussion you, that Rome for Carter can have later on. Um, about what that may look like. That may look like a, a, a contingent coming through, I don't know. Might look like a, a kaumato coming through, I don't know. Uh, that's more discussions with Mana Fenua uh, when I get back to Wellington. Uh, that might look like other Iwi and residents that have been in Iwi and residents prior to come uh, and, and, and celebrate that. I don't know. But yes. that's just up for discussion. Kia I just like to acknowledge because he's come back to this week. I haven't heard, seen a single old lady who does the karana come to a week. I asked you about this now. I'm very pleased with you, Ta, coming home <laughs> to us. There's only one person that hasn't come back to us. Is your lady that does the karana. <coughs> uh, you know, you put us wait for the RIT. You must wait for us when we've you need to bring back what you guys are doing. Carl Johnson needs to bring back what he's doing. We're all accountable to our trust. I thank you, uh, Carl. But, um, Amo, I think you need to talk to your lady that does the karana. Can I just say that we whānau, or Steve whānau, has suffered a bereavement in the last couple of weeks. So, yes, there is an expectation that we should be here. We'll go down for the open. However, there are extenuating circumstances, but we will make sure that she very clearly understands the expectation of her presence at the next we are in. Right, are we finished? Have we got any more? Come with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else got any more? <laughs> Last call. Last call. Last call. Last call. Kia ora, Samuel. Kia ora, Oh. ハハ、オープンで。ああ。ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ち